delegates meeting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Has, and who has just made a motion to put this agenda at all? I, I did. What? I did. Yeah. Yes. So she's putting an agenda. Okay. Yes. And she's amending it. Yeah, she's yes. amending the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded to add a motion for the removal of Delegate Steve Brown to the agenda. Would that be number five? Would you like to the I can't Point of order, Madam Chair? Yes. Did I, did I just hear correctly that someone is putting a motion to remove someone from the LSB? Yeah, that's right. From the uh, uh, delegate. That's that's the LSB manager. Yeah. Removing yeah, someone as a delegate, remove them from the LSB. Well, I know he's a delegate. Is that what I just heard, Madam Chair? Yes, yes. 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 Order of order, Madam Chair. Yes. That's out of order. How so? Well, uh, first of all, obviously removing somebody from the uh, body is disciplinary and you're not allowed to just jump up and do it. Furthermore, putting it in that manner is prejudicial and, and violates uh, Robert's rules of order. You are not permitted to go around just naming people and saying, I move. You're not allowed to put somebody's name in a motion. Uh, that I have not heard. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, um, uh, we can go to page 630 of Robert's Rules, if you want, and look at that. You're not allowed to put a, a, uh, a person's name in a motion. A motion, you are not allowed to use someone's name in debate, and a motion may not have, do something that is not allowed in debate. That's page 31 of Robert's Rules. So in other words, you're saying it should omit the name and just say a motion. Second of all, Madam Chair. Yes. Second of all, Madam Chair, this also violates not only Robert's rules in more than one way, it violates the bylaws of the Pacifica Foundation. If someone is if someone wants to remove someone, you can't just say, I move to do this at a meeting. You have to go through a whole trial. Furthermore, as Roberts also says, any disciplinary action must be done in executive session. It's illegal to even mention a person's name in the manner that has just been done. For these reasons, I would suggest that this, this motion to add something like that to the uh, agenda is out of order for several reasons. Okay, it's my understanding, first of all, the bylaws trump Robert's rules. And the bylaws require that everything be done in public except a very limited range of things which do not include discipline of members of the local station board. Everything is to be done right out of the open sure, and public. Well, 
Yeah. Don't be sure. Let's take the bylaws. Uh, the bylaws trump Robert's rules. That's one thing. Now, I do believe that if, if, there's, if something of this ilk is afoot, then there has to be notice. I mean, would this be notice that you're bringing such a motion at a future delegates meeting? I'm asking you, Neil. Madam Chair, uh, apparently. The no, please, please, I, I have asked you a question. Will you please not shout out? Please don't shout out. Yes. Um, we, we could pick a date. I went to the calendar in the middle of the PSB meeting. That means so many meetings. The available dates, I would say, would be the 29th. But in reference to the, the bylaws, thank you, my folks. You know, last year I said over there, it's a good place to sit because you're really getting a chance to listen rather than when you're up here or what we would do is talk. And if my memory serves me correctly, uh, I'm quoting this thing here, which I can't see very well. Did we just read? Did we just read? I don't, I don't think it. I'm not sure. You're allowed to name an offender, but it's not an emotion. Madam okay. Chair, okay. we should read the bylaws section. Excuse that me. Okay. To this I, because I, that I have the right here. Yes. All right. Here. All right. I will. I will do I so, and, and, I, and I will ask you in the future to please wait to be recognized and not shout out. Well, please come to order. Yes. Please come to order. I have it bracketed okay. over. Okay. Right there. The section of the bylaws. Uh, well, this is the bylaws about a delegates meeting upon the fair and reasonable determination by a vote of all the directors of the foundation or a two-thirds vote of all the delegates for the same radio station as the delegate in question. Really At, okay. Uh, this would be D of Article 4, Section 9, Removal of Delegates. D, upon a fair, the fair and reasonable determination by a... Oh, at the top, okay. Any delegate shall be removed from the position of delegate and cease to be a delegate upon the occurrence of any of the following. A, said delegate's death or resignation. B, upon the occurrence of a disqualifying act, e.g. the appointment to an elected political office. C, failure of a delegate to attend three consecutive local station board meetings, which absences have not been excused by a majority vote of the LSB members present at the meetings in question. D, Upon the fair and, reasonably fair and reasonable determination by a vote of all the directors of the foundation or a two-thirds vote of all the delegates for the same radio station as the delegate in question at a meeting on said issue after, re after a review of the fact that, in its sole discretion, said delegate has exhibited conduct that is adverse to the best interests of the foundation of the radio station or E, upon the majority vote of the class of members associated with the radio station who originally elected the delegate voting by the but anyway, that would be the, uh, and there's, farther on it says, in the event of a removal proceeding pursuant, pursuant to this section 9D or 9E, the delegate must be afforded reasonable and appropriate due process according to the circumstances, including notice and an opportunity to be heard at the meeting or in writing if a written ballot is submitted to the members. Okay. Um, Uh, Bob, keep going. You want me to keep? Excuse me. Did you raise your hand? Yes. Madam Chair, if you're going to read the section, please read the entire section, including the end part. All right. I will read the end part. Any delegate who is who is removed, who was simultaneously serving as a foundation director or an officer of the foundation or an LSB, shall also be deemed removed from any and all of these positions and from any positions on the committee that she or he held by reason of his or her role as a delegate or director. Notice of a meeting to remove a delegate must be given in writing at least 30 days in advance. A delegate removed pursuant to this section 9D or 9E shall not be eligible for re-election as a delegate for a period of three years. So I want to ask Nia, <laughs> is this no. the notice in writing or is this the actual motion? Because if it's the actual motion, we cannot address it here. I have, I, I have the motion. Now, on, uh, I guess I would want to mention Bob. To help me here, the um, on the KPFT's website, right? Uh huh. When a delegate was removed, that stuff I got directly from there. So, what stuff? I'm sorry. What stuff? In terms of the information to write the motion. Oh, okay. So, Bob. Bob. I, I, I will. I will. I will ask. I will ask Bob for his opinion because it's my opinion that this requires 30 days written notice. Uh, yes, it does require 30 days written notice, and uh, it's noteworthy in terms of the point of order that's been made that um, earlier this year, KPFT's 
delegate assembly, the parallel group to ours, um, did something which appears to be very similar to what this member is proposing. Um, it was a motion to schedule a meeting of KPFT delegates for a certain date for the sole purpose of considering the removal of a delegate, um, and then it went on to give the grounds and so forth. Uh, this was done in public session. The meeting to remove him was done in public session, and I understand that this was done on advice of Pacifica's council, so that, um, as the chair said earlier, the Pacifica bylaws trumps any conflict with Roberts. So whereas Roberts says, Roberts Rules of Order says it should be an executive session, Pacifica's bylaw says it should be in, that all meetings should be in public unless they're in this narrow set of exceptions, which this does not fall into, things like um, uh, personnel matters, legal advice, counsel, something like that, and it doesn't fall in under any of those. It certainly is not a personnel matter, because that pertains to staff of the foundation. Uh, something about that chat. Right. If I may read. Um, yes. I am uh, delighted to uh, hear that uh, you're considering holding this in open session. I would uh, welcome uh, the equivalent of a full trial to address the charges I know you're going to bring, which are false. Uh, unlike the last time you tried something like this, Excuse waited, me, please uh, I am stick to them. I'm Mr. Roberts. Let me say what I have to say. Personal privilege. The last time you did something like this, you waited until I announced that I had family business and had to be out of town, and you ran this through. This time, uh, in open session, I feel that uh, since my fiduciary responsibility for the listeners outweighs any confidentiality matters at the board, we will expose all the stuff going on. Some of the charges are very interesting, and I would like to bring them into public. Uh, they involve embezzlement, misuse of listener funds. They involve uh, bad behavior on the part of board members and staff members. I welcome the opportunity to address this in full open session. Thank you. Okay. Um, but just to just to make it clear, Article Six: Meetings of the Board of Directors, Section Seven: Open meetings. All meetings of the Board of Directors and its committees, of which we are one shall be open to the members and to the public with the exception of those meetings dedicated to or predominantly regarding personnel, proprietary information, yes, litigation, and other matters requiring confidential advice of counsel involving commercial or financial information obtained on a privileged or confidential basis, or relating to a purchase of property or the use or engagement of services whenever the premature exposure of said purpose, purchase or sale in the board's sole opinion may compromise the legitimate business interest of the foundation. You opened up the Pandora's box, Okay, um, please wait to be called upon in order to speak. Okay, so it, it, I, I want to be, I, I'm not clear about what this motion is. Is this in fact a motion at, to set a date? It's to set, and no one is being, we're not accusing him. Hang on, meeting. please use the mic. Okay, I'm not, yeah, I'm not accusing him, but I, I want to, it's a motion to say this will be considered at the October 29th meeting. There's an October 29th meeting, or you're, well, you want to set a date? Yeah. There has to be 30 days notice. October what? It would be based on the calendar 29. What day of the week is that? I think it's a Monday. Oh, there's a 30th, but I know a couple of members can't make Tuesdays. There's no other day. I just want to do Halloween. Might not be a bad idea. Or doorbell night? No, I will reserve your comment. <laughs> the yes, Jamie. Do, do we need to consider this now? Because my understanding yes. is we're, we're considering the uh, uh, agenda for the delegates meeting. This is the agenda, I think, right? I, yeah, that's oh. All right. This is the only place we can do this in delegates meeting. Right, we can only we can only raise it in a delegates meeting because it has to do with the delegates. So this this would be the time and place, and and it is indeed in order to bring to bring um, a motion to consider. Is that yes? Motion to consider. motion to consider what? Consider what? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I've looked at the. The removal of uh, the delegate member. No, we can't do that in this meeting. We have to consider addressing that at, addressing. at a subsequent meeting. Right. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, if you can only uh, 
consider doing this at a delegates meeting. And we were not, I believe, we set this delegates meeting last, at the last meeting to right. consider one issue, which no. is the bylaws. And I, if you can only consider it at a delegates meeting, the procedure is to set a delegates meeting to consider having a set delegates meeting. Is that how it would work in the in the ordinary sense if we didn't have this emergency bylaws issue to, to address? Well, in point of fact, we set a delegates meeting because we had to because we had to address the bylaws. But any you know we have a, a period to set the agenda and anything can be added to it. It's only in an executive session that has been called specifically for a, for a purpose that nothing else right. can come up. I see, but I don't believe we called this delegates meeting for anything other that to consider the bylaws and to set the agenda for the time of the discussion of the bylaws. Right. And it was those were, that was the only exception to the continued meeting that was allowed. And that was the way the, uh, I believe this is acting in proper procedure, but that we cannot consider anything else. We can't just throw something else Bob into seems this to be meeting. Burning. Bob seems to be burning to say something. Bob, that I'm well, I made the motion to have this delegates was not a motion for a specific purpose. I, I, I said That's that right. the reason I thought it was important to have it was because the bylaws amendments were pending. But there's nothing to preclude a member from adding items once That's we right. get here. There's no restriction in the bylaws against adding additional items once you convene the meeting. That just doesn't exist. Yes. Um, your ruling was that the only time we could consider a future delegates meeting for a delegates issue was to add a delegates However, that's why we must consider this now. However, last meeting, we considered a, a delegates meeting at a regular LSD meeting. So my contention is we can consider Nia's uh, pro pro proposal to have a, a special delegates meeting to remove Steve. We can do that any, any time. We don't need to do that now. We don't need to do that at this delegates right. meeting. We, we don't need to do it now, but we can vote whether to do it now. Now. There's no reason not to postpone it either. So you're proposing, there's a proposal to add to the uh, agenda an item to set a uh, meeting? Yeah. Is that what this is? Or to set, to set an item to be taken up at a future meeting. Oh. In other words, this constitutes written notice, does it not need Madam Chair, can yes. I request that we have some concrete wording on this one way or another? Otherwise, we're going to go around all night with people trying to say something different. Let's hear something concrete and agree on it or disagree on it. Okay, can you, can you read the first paragraph of what you have here? All right, can you, actually, I don't know if that's on. Why don't I read it? It's on. It's on. Okay. Resolve that the WBAI Assembly of Delegates will hold a meeting on, and it leaves the date open October 2007, from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for the sole purpose of considering the removal of Delegate Steve Brown, as per the motion below, and that notice of the meeting and the purpose for which it is called shall be immediately posted on the WBAI LSP section of the WBAI. Okay, so that's it. Madam Port of Order, Madam Chair. Yes. The Roberts Rules requires due process for anyone who is accused of something. I think it is not due process to go plastering someone's name all over uh, the website. That's, that's, uh, that's called convicting someone and presuming guilt. And I think that would be out of order. Furthermore, this motion uh, seems out of order to me because Nobody has put anything in writing and given it to the member. So your cart's before your horse, and it's out of order anyway. Okay, well, Bob? Okay, first of all, um, this procedure about noticing it on the website is identical to what the KPFT board did on advice of counsel. It's giving the public notice as to what is, what is the topic of this meeting, number one. As far as not giving the written notice yet, that's my understanding is that's why the member is putting this on the agenda, so that she can then offer the motion, give the member the, the written notice tonight, and, and then he will have it. So that's the purpose of adding it to the agenda. Okay, yeah, there's a question from Father Lucas. Yeah, I'm just wondering, when you use the term website, 
Are you talking about the WBAI website? Are you talking about somebody's personal website where they put all kinds of junk on? Um, probably a little bit, please don't characterize what they well, put on their websites. But yes, we're talking about the WBAI website. Okay. That's correct. The official website. The official website. Um, okay, so, and I am going to rule that motion in order. And um, that it's in order to place it on the agenda. Okay, so do I have a... Okay, yes, so there's so if there's no further discussion, we'll vote on whether or not this is going to go. There's further discussion, Madam Chair. I, uh, what, the, the person is saying that we're going, well, let's hear this in red again. The actual thing you want to put in the agenda. The actual I think words that's what she agenda. just Fine. read. Let's hear it again. But, but you said, but now you're no. saying October 29th, or you said, you said the date later. Uh, That's what she, well, that one was yeah, just read. Let me read it again, because apparently it wasn't heard previous to the first paragraph. Right. Resolved that the WBAI Assembly of Delegates will hold a meeting on blank October 2007 from 7 to 8.30 p.m. for the sole purpose of considering the removal of Delegate Steve Brown, as per the motion below. And the notice of the meeting and the purpose for which it is called shall be immediately posted on the WBAI OSB section of the WBAI website. Okay, and so here, um, all, excuse me, ma all in, Madam Chair, yes. what is the purpose? I'm sorry? What is the purpose below? Let me see. Oh, as per the motion below. But well, that motion would have to be brought at the next meeting. That's what the, he has to have written notice of. Okay, so. Madam Chair, there's right. a reference to a motion. All right. Don't well, then let's. What, you, what we need to do is take out this, um, this parenthetical thing. Point of order. Yes. The whole point of giving notice, written notice, is so that the member who the proceeding is being brought about will have notice of what the charges will be against him. So that's why I think it's in order to have the motion that will be brought at 30 days hence be contained within the motion to schedule the meeting. Otherwise, there's no real notice provided to that. To well, the then do okay, then I'll read, then I will read the rest of it. Okay, said that. The motion below basically further resolved that the following motion will be considered at that meeting. Where is WBI Delegate and Local Station Board LSB member Steve Brown has made repeated unsubstantiated allegations circulated to large, please. I will, all right, I will read more slowly. Whereas WBAI Delegate and Local Station Board member Steve Brown has made repeated unsubstantiated allegations circulated to large email lists of WBAI listeners the WBI program director Bernard White is involved in the disappearance of listener funds and in concomitantly depriving listeners of their station membership and resultant privileges, such as voting for LSB candidates or becoming eligible for election to the LSB themselves. A few of many examples are included in Appendix 1, and whereas Mr. Brown has also extended these allegations to other station personnel, and whereas no WBI local station member has the right to make unsubstantiated and defamatory allegations against WBAI managers or staff, i.e., without the Pacifica Foundation having accorded any investigation or due process to the accused staff member, or without giving the accused staff member a chance to respond to such accusations, and whereas Mr. Brown has publicly and unilaterally called upon WBAI listeners not to send their membership funds to the station's authorized address, Based on the previously mentioned unsubstantiated allegations against WBAI personnel, but instead to send them directly to his personal home address, and whereas Mr. Brown widely distributed his public call to direct donations away from the station's address, linked to unsubstantiated allegations of theft of membership and funds and other misconduct against WBAI program director Bernard White and other staff members, via emails to large email lists of WBAI listeners, and Whereas Mr. Brown's claims that money sent to WBAI cannot be trusted to be deposited and reported properly run counter to repeated on-air and website announcements over the last several years that station supporters should send donations to a P.O. box as opposed to the station street address, funds retrieved from which are directly deposited into WBAI's bank account, and whereas Mr. Brown failed to heed the strong warning emailed to Mr. Brown by Pacifica's legal counsel, 
stating that Mr. Brown's widely distributed email was completely inappropriate and that Mr. Brown should send a follow-up email to all those on his list advising them that A, he had erred in urging WBI supporters not to send funds to the station's official mailing address, and B, he should advise them that they should send any funds they want to donate to the station's official mailing address. Where is the WBAI local station board voted to disassociate itself on March 16, 2006 from an earlier long-running series of unsubstantiated defamatory and racially inflammatory allegations by Mr. Brown against Program Director Bernard White and other WBAI staff, see Appendix 2. And where is Mr. Brown failed to follow the call contained in that motion for, quote, all LSB members to desist from making statements that prejudge the performance of WBAI management personnel, perpetuate racist stereotypes, indulge in personal attacks on management and staff, and undermine listener financial support for the station. And whereas Mr. Brown's continuing defamatory statements against Mr. White as an agent of the station have created an atmosphere of suspicion that seriously hinders the station's ability to raise funds and also injures the entire station's reputation among its communities of listeners and Whereas Mr. Brown's egregious contract conduct has breached his obligations of good faith service to Pacifica, has violated his fiduciary responsibilities as delineated in the Pacifica bylaws, and has potentially subjected the network to litigation. Be it resolved that pursuant to De Pacifica bylaws, Article 4, Section 9D, removal of delegates, WBAI delegate Steve Brown shall be removed from the position of WBAI delegate upon the fair and reasonable determination by a two-thirds vote of all the delegates for WBAI for conduct that is adverse to the best interests of the foundation. Is this, do you want me to read this also? No, this. Madam Chair, I'm going to get a copy of that when we Yeah, you're going to give a copy of that to Mr. Brown? <laughs> yeah. I think, the, uh, Madam Chair, the entire LSB, the, all the delegates need to get a copy of whatever's going to happen. Yes, it, we're should, gonna vote. It, should, it should probably be, it should be posted to the local. Not posted. Paper. We should just all get a hard copy of this. Oh, a hard copy. Okay, I think she, I think Nia has the hard copies. Well, okay. Points, point okay. Point of order. Yes. At the last meeting that we had, when we set up the delegates meeting. We said the delegates meeting was for the sole purpose of discussing the PNB three resolutions and nothing else. So that's what we said, and I raised that issue, and that was Okay, we, we've, been, we've been over that ground already, and it's not the case. The point of well, I moved to overrule the chair. All right. It's been moved, it's been moved and seconded to Let the hear it. challenge the chair's ruling. Do I get to speak on it? I get to speak on it first. Yes? Didn't we, didn't we already go over this? The gang. Yeah, we did, but you're, am I ruling the that what, this is in order? That's the only thing I ruled. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, no, you didn't right, go over it. It's in order to place it. No, you didn't go over it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're talking about all right. another reason. I think that, I, excuse me, please, could this meeting, will this meeting please come to order? Will this, meeting, will this meeting please come to order? Will this meeting please come to order? Will we, can we please not have side conversations? If somebody has something to say, please raise your hand. Thank you, Madam and Chair. And wait to be recognized. Okay. I think that the conversation that we've had up to now makes it quite clear that in fact it is appropriate to have this on the agenda at this point. The member is giving notice and is about to give written notice to Mr. Brown that the next there will be a delegates meeting within 30, or, um, actually in more than 30 days, for the purpose of bringing this motion to remove him. Um, and I think basically based on the bylaws and on procedure that has already been been undertaken by another radio station under advice of counsel, that it is perfectly in order. Mr. Cohen. You wanted to speak? Yes. I'll see to uh, okay, I'll see. But he's, he doesn't have to yield to you, so can you? Oh, I thought you said information. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a point of order. How can someone challenge a ruling when they were not present at the time the ruling was made? So anybody can walk in five minutes later and we have to go through the old ground all over again? I think that he can do it. I will. I am, I am saying that it is in order for him to do it. 
Yes, Mitch. It takes two thirds vote to change the agenda from what it was established as. It was established solely as discussion of the Pacific and National <laughs> Board three resolutions that we're to discuss here and nothing else. I raised that issue at the last meeting, saying what if we want to discuss something else? That's why we argued over the time at the last meeting. And you ruled that we couldn't do that, that it's only for those three things. And now the agenda is being changed without a two-thirds vote and without it being part of what we had agreed to at the last meeting. Okay. So we're in violation of our own process. And the chair is the one who's out of order. All right, I'm going to, everybody has one shot at speaking, and then the chair gets to say we'll have a last word, and then you go. I, I will need to be. Is it you? Oh, wait, no, um, I have a couple hands up uh, at this end, and I have a couple hands up at this, and I'm going to take one from each side. Okay. 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 I don't know. Okay. Mitch, could you please uh, actually join exactly us or get us to the We have a couple of members who are why not sitting. Board of Order, Madam Chair, the person in charge says we have to keep this area here open for fire code right, regulations. Right. Are we one of the chairs? You can see. I'm raising a question. All right. If you he's know, on this board, yes. you can hear. All right. That's okay. I, you know, I think we're going to have, we do have, I'm sorry. Excuse me, please come, excuse me, please come to order. Please come to order. Mr. Cohen, please come to order. Um, we're, we, we have to adapt as best we can to the circumstances that we're in. It would be better if Mr. Cohen squeeze himself in here somewhere. I see some space there for a chair. I see some chairs down here that where Mr. Brown and Mr. Cohen could sit their space. Um, but I, yes, you said you were going to take two statements on the question. How no, I didn't. Relevant? I said I was going to go from back. From either forward. side. No. One on, from either side is what you said. No, I didn't. Yeah. I, said she she said, no. I said I was going to take from one side and then the other. That is what I said. I said I would call. No, I, no, I, I, if I, if, if I put a limit on the number of people who may speak, I spoke in error, but I don't believe I did. I said I would take one from each side, back and forth, in that order. I guess, okay. Yes. Madam Chair, since it seems the crux of uh, Mitch's uh, question about the, I can't reach the microphone. I'll just speak Somebody pass it to him. It seems the crux of the argument is that, you can't pull it. Don't, I, can you hear what I'm saying? What? Can you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. It seems that the crux of Mitch's argument. The acoustics here are good. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear? Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. I can hear you now. Okay, excellent. It seems that the crux of Mitch's argument is that the, at our last meeting we we moved that this delegates meeting was solely for the purpose of these bylaws. <laughs> Uh, amendments. So what I would like to do is to ask the secretary to read the motion that we passed so we can know what it was that we passed. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Again? Yeah, it was toward the end. It was at the very end. It was at the very end. Going. That was it. No, I'm sorry. That then we adjourned at 9:56. No, in a continuation meeting, meeting, but there has to be one. Meeting. The whole end of it is like a page and a half on. You mean on the? No, it's on the. It's on the. It's not. It's actually on the budget. Let me see. Then let me look back on the budget. Oh, you know what? I, now I, oh, yeah, but it should be in your minutes because as I recall, I think we agreed without objection that we would have a delegate, we would start and with a delegate's motion. meeting, but it was, it was Bob's motion. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to call for somebody on this side. Well, she's looking in her minutes. Bob? Well, I'll just reiterate. It was my motion. I did explain that the need for the delegates meeting was because we had bylaws amendments to take up but I did not say that the motion itself was you know that I moved to uh, have 
the delegates meeting for the sole purpose. I certainly never used the word the sole purpose of considering the bylaws. So as long as that was not done, there is no restriction on what we can add once we get here in the meeting itself. Point of order. The motion um, speaks for itself. Maybe we haven't read. I we no, have we already we have already had it read. Andrea? Uh, Andrea Andrea, we are now uh, we are now discussing and please do not speak out of turn please raise your hand and wait to be recognized we are now speaking to the question of upholding the chair's ruling that this may indeed be on the agenda and i have recognized andrea fishman she has the floor please allow her to speak uninterrupted andrea madam chair as i said before i recall the same thing we decided to continue the meeting with the sole exception of a discussion of, of the delegates uh, meeting to discuss the bylaws, and the only thing that we were going to decide was the time for that discussion. For the top, we were going to decide at this meeting the time for the discussion of the bylaws, and then we were going to hold the discussion about the bylaws, vote on the bylaws, and then return to the continued meeting. That was the exception we made because yeah, a continued the meeting cannot be changed. Yeah, Voted on in two thirds, or we all agreed actually that we had to discuss well, no, the bylaws. That okay. was the reason we changed the agenda, and that was the only reason. Okay, I have now the minutes, the secretary's minutes. So I'll just I'll just read those. These are the handwritten minutes, not the official minutes. But so these are what you draft minutes. Yeah. Uh, the chair said need a delegates meeting at the start of the 918 meeting for 45 minutes. Amend Mitch, one and a half hours. Point of information, Carolyn. Members know about changes. Bob, slight changes. Amend one and a half. Amend determined. No, we came. We came to a decision that it would be 45 minutes. That's it. No. What? We didn't. What did we? Oh, that's. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's right. We came to no decision. We said that we would set the time limit when we got tonight. When we got to it. Yes. Um, it's now Serene. It is now Serene's turn. It is now Serene's turn. I have recognized Serene. Please um, allow Serene to speak without interruption. The decision was with regard to a delegate's meeting on 9:18. Bob did propose 45 minutes. Colin proposed an hour and a half. I said it, uh, I proposed an hour, and what we finally agreed was that we couldn't actually set a firm time at that time, and that the LSB meeting would simply be continued after the delegate's meeting. There was no limit in terms of what could be on the agenda, nor was there a limit to the amount of time. Okay, um, that we would use for that meeting, although it seems. Okay, um, I have two. I have two more people who wish to speak. That would be our Paul Martin and Father Lawrence Lucas, and I'll speak once, and then we'll bring this to a vote. Yes, our Paul. Uh, first of all, wouldn't it be great if we had minutes of these meetings? Um, second of all, uh, I'm I'm speaking against this. I don't think this belongs in there. This is being done uh, in a very improper manner. Uh, this does not belong in the agenda and um, if you want to go by how they did it at KPFT I've seen that procedure get shot full of holes and it's it was it, it was done very badly so using them as a model is bad and I think that what's been read out here already is libelous and uh, I, I, I think uh, Mr. Brown is being libeled and has been libeled and has been libeled on the air by certain people and um, I, I think that uh, I think the majority here is treading something that's that could be dangerous and uh, let's all go on the record and I move that we make this a roll call vote. Okay, Father Lucas? Yeah. Father Lucas. Madam Chair, I'm just curious if we'll ever get anything done tonight. If anybody could come in late and then reverse go back to what has already been done because he or she was not here, then maybe somebody will come in in the next 15 minutes and we have to do this all over again. It no. doesn't make any sense. We won't have to do it all over again. Um, okay, uh, I would ask people to note that first of all, per the draft minutes, per Serene's notes, per my memory, per Bob Letterer's memory, who brought the motion, indeed this meeting was not limited, this delegates meeting was not limited to the bylaws, which we do still have to get to. People will note that at the top of this page it says draft agenda, and that the first item is set agenda, 10 minutes, which we have already gone very far beyond. Um, therefore, it does not require a two-thirds vote to make a change. Now, um, we will now come to a vote without objection, a roll call vote. Can this, is there any objection to a roll call vote? 
Okay. There's no objection to a roll call vote. Point of information, this is to overrule the chair about Right, all those in favor of the chair's ruling that it is in order to bring this motion that is... I, it's by Collins. Yes, it's by Collins. Want to restate your motion? No, he just, he did, no, he just moved to challenge the chair's just ruling. Just challenge. Challenge the chair's ruling. Yeah. That, it, that indeed Nia's motion is in order to be placed on this agenda. Okay, so without objection, there'll be a roll call vote. Please call the roll, Secretary. Please call the roll. So the vote is just to clarify because these votes always seem to be done somewhat counter to logic in that what we will be voting to do, if you vote yes, you will be upholding the chair's ruling. And if you vote no, you will be voting to overturn the chair's ruling. Okay, all those, oh no, sorry. Please call the roll. Ben Yaka? Yes. Yes. Burden? Sorry. Uh, Bornstein? Yes. Yes. Brooks? Yes. Brown? No. No. Clay? Yes. Yes. Cohen? Not a chance. Libelous. Yes. Yes or no? I think we can. I think we can take that as a no. Secretary, retarde. Retarde. Kathy Davis. No. No. Guess who? Guess who made that? Please, uh, please, please, please come to order. Lisa Davis. Of course, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Fishman. Uh, no. No. Plus, this is Griffin. Yes. Yes. Uh, LaForest. Yes. Yes. Letterer. Yes. Yes. Father Lucas. Yes. Yes. Martin. No, no, no. No. Rose? No. No. Robert? Yes. Yes. Ross? No. No. Steinberg? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. You don't get to vote. Nope. Okay, the yeses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's ten. I'm going to count the second. Ten yeses, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight no's. Eight no's. So it's ten yeses and eight no's. Okay. So yes. Yeah. Your usual practice. Um, Mr. Brown? Is, uh, I have the reason I asked is because I have of some medical problems with family members and they call me out of state sometime oh, in uh, October. Are there some dates you can give us? I, I don't know at this moment. I have to wait to hear from the facilities, but uh, I will certainly... Then we, then, uh, then we would have to say at a time 30... He's present. At and 30 days from now when Mr. Brown he's can he's be present. present. Of course. Right. So and then we will have to... Have, then how will we arrive at that date? We don't want to do business on the, on the email list. Yes, three. At uh, at a date, thirty days from now, or uh, well, at least thirty days from now, but no later than uh, November. No later than November sixth. All right. So that you'll bring, you'll, when we get when we get to that when we get to that on this on the on the agenda, then we'll do it. We're right now in the middle of a part of the motion. Since he has indicated the twenty ninth. Right. He's actually amending the, the motion. I think you amend the motion when we get to it on the uh, on the agenda. So I think we've I think we've gone out of a, a bit out of a bit out of order here. But what we are at now is is simply the motion to place this on the agenda. Yes means yes. Place it on the agenda. And number five, no means no. Nope, nope, nope. Kathy Davis? 
No. Lisa Davis? Yes. Yes. Fishman? No. No. Griffin? Yes. Yes. LaForest? Yes. Yes. Lettera? Yes. Yes. Lucas? Yes. Yes. Martin? No. No. Rhodes? No. No. Roberts? Yes. Yes. Ross? No. No. Steinberg? No. No. Okay. Yes is have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Nos have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, yeses are ten and the noes are eight. Place it on the agenda. Vote on the whole motion. Yeah, okay. What's now we have to vote on the entire motion for the to accept the agenda as amended. All those in favor? All those in favor? Oh, yes. Madam Chair, we haven't discussed the timing of the other three. Um, no, we haven't. Um, amendments. Yeah. And I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor of moving on until we discuss those three items on the agenda. So basically, time, you're talking about the much time. too short. Yeah, they're much okay, too short. Okay, what do you what do you want to suggest? Well, I would like to. Uh, by the way, all right. I'm just I'm just going to ask if, if there's no objection. I need to. Um, I believe I should point out to the members that we need to revisit the budget at this meeting. So we do want to to, to get through this as, in an expeditious fashion. So we also have to vote to revisit the budget. Well. We would have to, yes, without objection, amend the, um, in the uh, or, or by a two-thirds vote, amend the, the following agenda which you have, which was set, in order to revisit the budget be, just because we've been ordered to by, what was it, the Finance Committee of this? Yes, by the Finance Committee of the Pacific and National well, Board. So we have a lot of business on our plate tonight. Right. Just and so, so, so people bear that in mind in, in setting time because we don't have a lot of time. Okay, so are you saying that tonight the only things that we really will be able to discuss be able to have a continued meeting. You're suggesting that we amend the agenda to, uh, we need two thirds to change the continued meeting part to discuss the budget. And, we, we and that, we, and that, so that the items that we, I want us to think in terms of the time and allotting the time for the right. various matters. Right. So I think the various matters are these three bylaws amendments and Four. the agenda. Four. Or this agenda as it is, and then the subsequent agenda, which should include a discussion of the budget. And, and, and then this continued agenda for local station board meeting. We will then, um, when we're done with what's on here, we will uh, adjourn the delegates meeting and then we will call to order a meeting of the local station board in which it is to be hoped people will agree to add to that uh, reopening the issue of the budget because we have been or asked, ordered asked whatever to do so by the, by the finance committee so i'm speaking so i'm saying in terms of how much time we've got to play with all together it, it, it's, I don't think it will be wise to set very long periods of time here for something that has been posted on, on a website for a very long time. Is it in order, Madam Chair, even though we are not in a meeting of this local station board at this point, but we're in a meeting of the agent, of the delegates, is it in order, Madam Chair, to consider how much time we would be spending on the budget when we become LSB members again? and? a lot of that time accordingly comparing it to the amount of time we have and the amount of time that we think would be necessary to discuss these amendments. No. I think these amendments need much more time and so I would like to know how much time we have and then I would like to allot the rest of the time to the budget and I think the budget needs a lot of time also. I agree with you. Okay. I don't, so I would like to see how we can, as a matter of process, I would like to understand how we can consider these matters and a lot of the times now, even though we're not in an LSB session, but we're in a delegate session. Then we need to ask Nia what time we need to be out of here and then we need to know what time it is and then we can figure Thank out you. how much time we can spend on each thing.
Lighting. I have a please people come to order. Please come to order. Please let's not have side conversations. Let's say 9.30. Okay, what time is it now? It's 8.30. Can we call the order? Can we get going? No, excuse me, Madam Chair. Do, do, what can we say? I think that we need much more time for these amendments and we need a substantial amount of time for the budget. And now we are told we only have an hour. Mr. Uh, Bob. Uh, Bob has the floor. As a point of order, I think the chair should direct the member to make a motion. That's we're in a we're in a state now of considering the agenda, and so if someone wants to amend it, they should make a specific motion for a specific number of minutes, and we should vote and move on. This meeting is rapidly running out of time. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I make a motion. Yes. I make a motion that we discuss each amendment at, for at least a half an hour each and the, agen and the budget for an hour, at least, and that with time to extend if necessary. Okay, that's a, that's, I, I'm, I'm just going to put that to a vote right now. All right, that would be each item on the bylaws for one half hour and the, and the uh, which would bring us to times four, um, and I guess one half hour for item five. That would bring us to two and a half hours plus one hour for the budget would bring us to three and a half hours. That would no, bring no, us to... No, you're not adding it up correctly. Three times uh, 30 minutes is an hour and a half plus an hour for the budget. Four, four times hours. 30 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Three times is an hour and a half plus I'm guessing you're offering a, also a half hour for item that is number five now. What's number five? The motion that was just placed on by means of an amendment to consider removal of Steve Brown. So that's two hours, and then you have a third hour. All right, let's just bring it to a vote. Board of order, Madam Chair. Board of order. Yes. Um, the delegates meeting can deal with the delegates meeting's agenda. We can't that's correct. go into the LSB agenda and say about the budget. That's correct. We, we have to deal with the delegate stuff here and the LSB stuff there. So she proposed a half hour for each item that would make two hours. That would bring us up to 1030, just so people know what they're voting for. All those in favor, all those, please, all those in favor of a half hour per item. The four item, no, I'm sorry, excuse me. Andrea. You were present when we voted to amend this agenda to add an item number five, the motion to consider the removal of, of the, that was giving notice. I, we had discussed it ad nauseum. That was added to the agenda. All right, now that will take up some time as well. How much time do you propose? You propose a half hour for each of one of, of items two, three, and four. How much do you propose for item five? Oh, for item five, then I, I propose uh, 45 minutes. Okay. All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those in favor. One, two, all those opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I asked all those in favor twice. All right, I will, I will make, I, I want it to be noted in the minutes that our Paul Martin asked for a recount and that I said a recount would be fine. All those in favor of items two, three, and four, a half hour each, and item five, 45 minutes, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay. All opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That does not carry. All right. So the motion, so the, the it goes back to what it was, except that we don't have a time limit for the uh, discussion of this. The, yes, you can offer a time limit. I'd like to offer 15 minutes on item five. 15 minutes on item five. All those in favor? So how many minutes? Oh, so, so it is uh, moved and seconded. 15 minutes for item five. All those in favor? And three and a half an hour. One. No, no, that's already been voted down. Um, one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. In favor, all opposed. One, two, three, four, five. That is not. That carries. That does carry. Um, now we're back to the agenda. Now we have it as amended, as you see before you written. All those in favor. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that carries. All right, bylaws amendment. We're down to move on to the next order of the agenda. The bylaws amendment package number one. Bylaws amendment package number one, please come to order. Bob, you, you're bringing this, sorry, right. you, you're coming from that. Uh, well, uh, before we begin, um, the this entire package of amendments came out of proposals from Pacifica's National Election Supervisor, Casey Peters from Los Angeles, and um, he was invited to be present and was present at the KPFK Delegates Assembly when they uh, voted to support all three of these packages. So I'd like to ask for uh, permission to invite him to participate by, by cell phone, um, a speaker phone, so that he can clarify the issues and answer questions as, as he's done before, and also as he did at the Pacific National Board meeting. Is there any objection to hearing from Casey Peters? I, I have a question. No. Yes. Uh, at what time category is that going to apply to? Yeah, for which one? Or, or for all of them? For, uh, that would be for all three of the packages of amendments, because he, he was involved in, in developing all three of those packages. Each one? But, but, but is that going to take away the time? He can't speak more than... Yeah, it will, but he can't speak more than three minutes on anything, any more than anybody else can. Objection. We there is an objection. We're, we're okay. the ones who are supposed to debate this. Uh, you know, we can read. Okay, so we'll put it to a vote. Since there's an objection, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor of having Casey Peters uh, Madam on, Chair. Speaker vote, on speakerphone, yes. yes. Madam Chair, and if he is there, to, it's, it's, hey, Madam Chair. excuse me. Please come to order. Uh, I'm going please. to start. I'm st I don't know if we Did have a time here, but I'm going to start the clock on this. Okay. No, so no, no, Madam Chair. If he is going to explain things to us and assist us, it shouldn't take part of the clock for our debate. We voted on debate. We voted on discussion. We didn't vote on having an outsider explain things to us. If we need his explanation, it should not take time from our discussion. And I object if you're taking time from it now. It's out I'm of order. I'm starting the clock. I'm starting the clock all together. Order of information, Madam Chair. Yes. Who's making this motion to bring this person here? What's up? That was Bob. Thank you. Bob. Okay, all those Ball, in favor. Please. Again. Yes, we have to vote. There was an objection. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Good, now begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that what I'm seeing? One, two, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, 11. All opposed. All opposed. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that carries. Well, Ray, while you're getting Casey on the phone, Bob, please. Sure, speak okay. Quickly. All right, so um, this is. There are three packages that we have to vote on separately, but they they all kind of, kind of come out of a, a similar set of concerns that um, Casey Peters is really just the latest in a line of, of election supervisors who've raised these concerns, and many listeners and staff from all over the network have been troubled by several things that perhaps were not thought through as well as they could be when the bylaws were drafted. Number one is that the schedule prescribed for elections um, is, is quite is quite um, interfering with uh, other activities at Pacifica. Specifically, the October pledge drives at all five stations happen at the height of the period where the ballots have been distributed and where there should be on-air debates and so forth. And that that makes for a very difficult, you know, set of uh, reconciling some two two types of needs for airtime. Um, in addition, the idea of a four-year I'm sorry, of a three-year term means that in order to maintain the staggering of the election, so you, you only have half the board up for election at any one time, that two out of every three years you're holding an election. Um, and that has, has meant a huge cost financially. Each of these elections is about $200,000 for the foundation. Um, and also in terms of the, the drain of energy, where a lot of people are focused on um, themselves or people that they're supportive of getting elected or re-elected and it's less energy to put into the governance process and to just maintain the five stations. The staff has a lot of responsibilities as far as 
uh, doing things to support the elections and so forth. So both for the drain of energy, the drain of mo money, and the fact that that schedule also puts Pacifica's election in conflict with government elections on even years. Uh, in uh, 04, we had elections. That was a presidential election year. Uh, if the schedule's not changed, we're going to have it um, uh, again, I think in 2010, when there's congressional elections and so forth. So uh, there's you know, a fair number of people in our listenership who, are, who get involved in those other elections. And so again, it's kind of a divided energy. So for all these reasons, this package was developed uh, with the advice of Casey Peters by, and was uh, worked out largely by the Pacifica National Board Election Committee, which adopted the general idea behind these provisions um, without any objection. It was kind of across the board, all the points of view united on this. So why don't we start with the first one, um, which is the first package. Changing the schedule of delegate elections in each election year to start and end earlier, it's about uh, a month and a half, plus or minus, um, make some adjustments to the intervals between particular deadlines and give the PNB flexibility to change the dates if there are extraordinary circumstances. However, delegates would continue to start their terms in December. And the sections changed would be Article 3, Section 10, Article 4, Section 4A, and 5. And I'd like to ask if we could dispense with the reading. It's a very, very long language of the exact word-for-word -word changes and that has been noticed for 60 days. I emailed the, the information to the board several days ago. Um, so I'd like if we could not have to actually read the text. No, no I, uh, I object. Uh, and I also would like to know when this takes effect. Okay, just as a, as a what, what do you mean when it takes effect? Point of if, Bob, if, I, no, if, excuse me, I heard what you said. Yes, Bob. Uh, it takes effect immediately. Um, however, the, well, the, okay, the four-year term would take effect immediately so that if, if this is if it goes through all the steps to, towards adoption, which in this case means a vote by the a majority of the membership in the ballot election but if they do that, um, every delegate elected in this same election will automatically have their term um, be four years instead of three years. That's retroactive. Uh, but the people who are seated now who were elected last year will not have their terms automatically. That's retroactive. Okay, so we'll be And then the, if the term limits are voted, they would take effect at the end of everyone's term that they're serving or that they're about to get. Okay. Um, just as a, as a matter of keeping everybody informed, we're now at five minutes on the on this first item, and if I if I read it, we may very well come to the end without there being time for further discussion. Um, so, if, if, do you still wish for me to read it? May we are are we need to know what it is, and I think we should move to extend for discussion. I mean, otherwise, this constitutes a ramrod railroading through of the well, bylaws. Actually, actually, all right, hang on. Sending it to us does not constitute discussion, been, Madam Chair, or anyone else present. That's, that's why correct. we were elected to discuss and think about Please, things. Please, let's not have back and forth. Um, we're now on discussion of this. Yes, Father Chair, Lucas. Chair, Chief, yes. Board of Order, Madam yes. Chair. There's someone over here who's trying to have an argument with somebody. Would you, Chair, please call everyone to order yes, so we can hear each other. Please come to order and not have side arguments. Father Lucas has the side. Oh, please, all right, please, or please do not. Uh, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Father rate, Lucas has the floor. At the rate we're going, uh, since we're not owners of this building, and we have been told by those who own the building that we have a time limit. This business about extend, extend, extend. Uh, who's going to close up? Uh, all right, that's a that's a reasonable question. I don't I don't know the answer. Um, all right, I'll read it then. I'll read it. I'll read it. I'm sorry. Bring that to a point of order. To my reading. Point of order. There's a point of order, please. There's a point of order that. Serene has the floor. This thing has been noticed for two months. It was sent to the LSB. We're not foregoing discussion. Discussion is a good thing. Let's have that. But I assure you, the time will be done if we take the time to read it again when everyone has had the All right. opportunity there's an to read it for two months. Okay, there's an objection to my not reading it and there's an objection to my reading it. Let's just bring it to a vote. All in favor of my reading it, please raise your hand. Order of order, Madam Chair. Yes. Robert's rules requires that... It be read. It, yeah. If it's read. All right, then I'll read it. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to read it. All right, Article 3, Members of the Foundation, Section 10, Record Date. The proposed, all right, I'm just going to read the proposed amendment, right? The record date for purposes of determining the members entitled to receive notice of any meeting, entitled to vote by written ballot, or entitled to exercise any other lawful membership action, shall be 45 days before the date of the special meeting, 45 to 60 days before the day on which the first written ballot is distributed or made available to the members, based on the reasonable discretion of the National Election Supervisor, or 45 days before the taking of any other action as applicable. Determining the members of the I have had me a very hard time hearing you, and uh, I would be happy to uh, give you a brief report if, if you so desire. Can, can you up the uh, volume on that somehow? Uh, is there, can you make it any louder? Okay. Where is the speaker? Okay, so we're talking about the record date for the, the date on which it's determined who is entitled to exercise the powers of members. Can I, can I read this? I think yes. that I'm pretty familiar with it and I can go through it quickly yes, but please. also clearly enough. Okay. All right. Um, um, and, and I think for simplicity, I'm just reading the whole thing through, not just one at a time. So then we'll have it all. Very nice time hearing. If you find me back when you would like me to speak, I would be glad to do so. Okay. Put the phone near the speaker. That's fine. He doesn't need to hear the reading. He knows what this is already. Okay. Um, Article 4, Section 4, Election Supervisors. Uh, the proposed change to this section simply adjusts the date for appointment of the National Election Supervisor to match the new election timeline proposed below. While the current bylaws call for the National Election Supervisor to be appointed in May, the proposed amendment would change the date to March or, quote, no less than 90 days before nominations are set to open, whichever is earlier, unquote. Article 4, Section 4, Part B, local election supervisors will remain as is. Uh, this amendment will not require a vote of the membership. And then the change is um, where now it says in May, it would say in March of each year, in which there will be an election of delegates by the members. And then it, it would add a new phrase, or by a date no less than 90 days before nominations are set to open, whichever is earlier. And then back to the original, the executive director shall appoint a national election supervisor. And then it goes on to explain his or her role, which we don't need to read because none of the rest of that has changed. Okay, we're now okay. over to Article 4, Section 5, uh, Election Time Frame. I'm sorry, I just need to note that we're now over time for that first item. Should I proceed? Um, I, think, I think not. I mean, is, is, this, is this clear to everybody what, what this proposal is? Yes. Yeah. That, that, that it's basically to appoint the election supervisors earlier in the process that I'm gathering. Excuse me, that's not the whole part. I'm sorry, all right, I'm sorry. So, point of the point. Is there any objection? Is there any objection? Is there any objection? Please, I have the floor right now. I'll, I'll, I'll you know. Is there any objection to, to uh, Bob finishing reading when he's reading? No. No, okay. All right, uh, Article 4, Section 5, Election Time Frame. Key elements of this amendment. Voting would normally take place between August 15th and September 30th, rather than the current October 15th and November 15th, in order to eliminate conflicts between elections and station fund drives. In the event that the station does not receive the required quorum of ballots by the scheduled end of the election, the National Election Supervisor will be empowered to extend the voting at that station by up to four weeks, rather than the two weeks allowed in the current bylaws. The Pacifica National Board will be given limited power to set a different timeline in exigent circumstances. Such a change would require a two-thirds vote of all PNB members, which would have which would have to take place no later than November of the year before the scheduled election. And any alternative timeline established by the PNB would have to meet several conditions intended to safeguard members' rights. Um, I think this is going to take forever if I have to read word for word. This word it replaces that word. What I just read is a full summary of what all of the um, wording changes. So if I could just proceed to the new section, the new language. Yes. Okay. If in the year preceding uh, delegate yes. elections, the Pacifica National Board. Wait, 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 where are we? Yes. All right, so what, you, you, this part needs to be read? 
All right. Um, in a delegate election year, Excuse the me, nomination... Mr. Brown, do you have a copy of this? It would, I think it would be helpful if you were following. Of... You have a copy. I'm listening very carefully. Okay. All right. In a delegate election year, the nomination, insert the word period, or strike the word vacating, <laughs> seats, insert the word being that vacated, shall open on strike the words July 25th, insert June 1st, and remain open to strike the words 62, insert 30 days, Closing on strike September 25th and surge July 1st. The National and Local Election Supervisor shall thereafter prepare the written ballot for each radio station, listing all the candidates and setting forth all the other information required by the bylaws. Ballot shall then be mailed or otherwise made available to the members on strike October 15th and surge August 15th, or the following day, strike if October 15th and surge August 15th is a mail holiday. To be counted, a ballot must be received on or before strike November 15th and surge September 30th, the election close date. All ballots shall be held sealed until the election close date. The required quorum of ballots for any station is not received by the election close date, and the election close date for that station shall be extended by strike two additional weeks and insert up to four additional weeks until closed by the National Election Supervisor. The National and Local Election Supervisor shall have up to 15 days after the election close date to count the ballots and certify the results of the LSBs, the board, and the members, which results must be reported by Strike December 1st, insert October 15th, or if the election close date was extended, strike December 15th, insert by 15 days after the extended election close date, and shall be posted on the foundations and radio stations' websites. If no quorum of ballots is obtained by the extended date, then those delegates whose terms would have expired upon the election of new delegates shall remain in office until the next regularly scheduled delegate election. New language. If in the year preceding delegate elections, the Pacifica National Board determines by a two-thirds vote of the total number of directors conducted by email or paper ballot that the schedule above cannot be executed due to exigent circumstances, they may, by November 30th, adopt a schedule subject to the constraints herein. Number one, avoids where possible conflicts between major fund drives and the period between the close of nominations and the election close date. Number two, includes a period of not less than 30 days for nomination of candidates. Number three, allows no less than 35 days after the mailing of ballots, on or before which completed ballots must be received to be counted, quote, election close date, quote, provides that all other intervals within the timeline remain as stated in the preceding paragraph, and five, allows proceeding in December as provided in Article 7, Section 6B. Article 4, Section 7, transition election. Um, and then this would strike all of the election, all of the language, the first two paragraphs, which is outdated concerning the original 2003 election which read, following the adoption of these bylaws and consistent with the settlement agreement dated December 12, 2001, there shall be an election for all delegates for each radio station area. The interim board of directors by resolution shall establish a nomination election timeline for said elections, which time frame may be shortened and on dates other than those set forth in section five of these articles of these bylaws of this article. Uh, for this transition election only, the three staff delegates and nine listener sponsored delegates for each radio station highest ranked of the, in the first election shall receive, shall, shall serve for a term of, uh, expiring December 2006, and the next highest ranked three staff delegates and nine list sponsored delegates shall serve for a term expiring in December 2004. Beginning with the 2004 election of delegates, delegate election shall thereafter proceed in accordance with the remainder of the provisions of, art, of this article of, the, of these bylaws. Okay, all that stricken and replaced with, if bylaws amendments establishing four-year terms are approved by the membership in 2007, they will take effect immediately. In that event, any delegates and associate station representatives seated in 2008, and this was a drafting error, and the PNB has approved a correction which they're asking all the delegate uh, assemblies to make. It's not seated in 2008, it's seated in, two, in December 2007. So could we ask for just uh, without objection to make that correction in the language? Without objection? Okay. Uh, and in future elections shall be granted four-year terms. And any delegates and associate station representatives serving three-year terms in 2007 shall serve their original terms subject to the term limits, if any, approved by the membership in 2007. Consecutive term limitations applicable to delegates shall also apply to associate station representatives. Article 4, Section 8. Delegates, terms of office, term limits. Um, okay. Uh, stricken will be this sentence. A delegate's term of office shall be three years beginning in December. It will be replaced by this language. Terms of office. Delegates shall be elected in odd-numbered years for a term of four years. And then um, the next sentence would be stricken. Uh, currently is, a delegate may serve a maximum of two consecutive three-year terms and in no event more than six consecutive years. 
The delegate shall not be eligible for further service as a delegate until one year has elapsed after the termination of the delegate's second for second three-year term. And that would be replaced by uh, B, term limits. Three options, okay, these three options will be submitted to the membership for a ballot vote this October. Option one, no consecutive term. A delegate shall not be eligible for further service as a delegate until at least two years have passed after his or her leaving office. In the case of a delegate seated to complete a term vacated by a departed delegate, service of two years or more shall be considered a term. Service of less than two years shall not be considered a term. Option two, maximum two consecutive terms. A delegate may serve a maximum of two consecutive terms. A delegate who serves two consecutive terms or who leaves before completing a term shall not be eligible for further service as a delegate until at least two years have passed after his or her leaving office. In the case of a delegate seated to complete a term vacated by a departed delegate, service of two years or more shall be considered a term. Service of less than two years shall not be considered a term. Option three, no term limits. There shall be no limit on the number of terms for which a delegate shall be eligible to serve. Article four, section nine, removal of delegates. Um, and that is absolutely identical to the current language which Bajra read earlier in this meeting. The only change is the very last sentence where it says, currently reads, a delegate removed pursuant to this section 9D or 9E shall not be eligible for re-election as a delegate for a period of three years, and that would be changed to four years. Okay, uh, Article 7, uh, Section 2, Composition of Local Station Boards would simply change um, the sentence that now reads, the term of office of an associate station representative shall be three years, and it would change it to shall be four years with the term consistent with Article 4, Section 8. And then finally, in Article 7, Section 8 on associate stations, it would just change one word where it now says an associate station may be permitted to appoint one representative of the LSB of the foundation radio station with which it is affiliated for a term of three years, commencing in December of the year of appointment, um, and that would change it to a term of four years. And that's, that's all the changes. Okay, well, now, now, we are, now we're thrown into confusion because we're way over our limit. We're, eight, we're way over our limit. Um, please come to order. For the first item, so what I would suggest is without objection, without objection, that um, one person speak, presumably somebody wishes to speak against this. Uh, one person speak against, one person speak, and we're only talking now about Package one, the changes in the election year calendar. Okay? They only agree We're speaking to about package stuff. one. They didn't agree. They didn't um, extend the time. We'll have somebody extend speak against time. and somebody speak for. Point of information. Yes. Are we not going to be allowed to extend this time? Is that some decision? You have to bring a motion and it has to be voted. All right. What I'm, I'm actually, actually what I just did was suggest that we extend the time by asking if without objection we could have one speaker against and one for. Ma Madam Chair, yes. I do think we need more than one speaker for and against. I think, I, I think, Are you please in, a mo in, a, in the form of a motion. I move that the time, I don't know, I would like the time to be extended if mo people have things to, that they must say about the ballot. Give me a time, limit, please, give me a time. A time. Uh, each time. A time. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. All right. Uh, There's a motion to extend on uh, item two by 20 minutes. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that does not carry. Please come to order. Um, I, I had I had on the table it, uh, that without objection there would be one speaker for and one against. Is there any further objection to that? I object. There's an objection. All right. All those in favor of one speaker for and one against, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six, that does not carry. That means we have to bring it to a vote right away. Exactly. Madam Chair, I rise on a point of personal privilege. Well, no. We cannot, I and Please no one on this board another can time. Fairly it, it represent the interests of the station, the listeners, or the staff. This is not a point. This is not a point. Please come to this. order. Please, we everybody. Have no time to please, talk. Please come to order. Issues. No, this is not a point of personal privilege. Please come to order. Please come to order. 
Please come to order. It takes more time to bring you all to order when everybody talks. Point of order, all right. Chair. Yes, I. Would the chair please call a motion to the person to my left to order here? Which person would that be? Andrew. What? Oh, okay. Please come to order. Everybody to will everybody to Madam our chair, we left, talk please about come to order. One person for and one person this, against. I all right. We is it not carry? My proposal did not carry. That brings us back to an immediate vote unless somebody has another proposal, which must pass by a vote of two thirds. I move that we Yes, that right. Extend for ten minutes. A motion to extend by ten minutes. That means the people would all right. All those in favor. Notice there's no, there is no discussion of a motion to extend. All those in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All opposed. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That does not carry. We're back where we started. We have to bring this to a vote then. Madam Chair, yes. um, I would like to speak uh, against all three amendments on for one reason. I mean, under one reason. I, 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 I offered, I offered that you know one or four. I, I feel that more than down. one person should be talking for and against this. That's why I voted against it, Madam Chair. That's, I'm not against people talking about. We're back where we started. All right, please come to order. Please come to order. Yes, there's a point for order, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa has the floor. Just one um, Alex B delegate here. There are other people here too, and I don't think we should be just catering to just one. That's right. We are in a meeting. There's a whole body here. One person has been speaking, speaking, speaking. There are other people. Here. All right, we're going to well take it. It's for myself. All right. If I am doing it for the good of the network. network. All right, please order. Please, please, about the network. Please, 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 every I understand tempers are running high. I think it would have been it would be good to have some discussion. That's why I made a proposal. It was voted down. Bob. Point of information. Yes. Uh, how many minutes are left for the entire for all three packages combined? Twenty-five minutes are left for the whole. Thing. Okay, yes. then I would propose that we that we have um, combined discussion of all three amendments for twenty-five minutes. Okay. Is there any is there any objection? Please. Point we have information. To, yes. I I you guys have to be out of here at nine thirty. Please, that's not a point. Of, that's we understand that. Um, Okay, so we have 25 minutes left for the entire package. There has been a proposal that we devote the entire 25 minutes to discussion of all, not the entire, I mean to all three bylaws amendments. If there's no objection, then we can do it that way instead of taking it like one at a time. And then we'll bring them all to a vote at the end. Is there any objection to that? Point of information, what happens to the budget discussion? Well, then we have to have it afterwards. Yep. All right. Is there any objection? Seeing none. Okay. So, um, Bob, actually, but since Bob wrote, brought the motion, he should motivate it. He just talked for five minutes. He gets three, three minutes. minutes. He gets three minutes right. to motivate it. And please do not speak unless called upon. It eats up time. Um, I, I really don't have, have to add anything at this point. I, I would rather other people discuss it. And we should get uh, Casey Peters back on the phone in case there are questions that he Harpo Martin. Okay, uh, fast about all of these things. Um, I don't see the need for, for these amendments. And one thing is, given the way the Pacifica National Board has been behaving for the last three and a half years, giving them this rather enormous discretionary power over the elections and other things I think is extremely dangerous. We have seen that they can't hold by their own rules. For instance, the June, L the June PNB meeting was held at the end of July. Uh, give them, you know, and that's, that's concrete. It's absolutely supposed to be there. Give them 90 days to do something and I bet they'll take 100 or 180 or maybe they won't do it at all. Giving them a lot of discretion is a bad idea. Two, uh, the idea that these uh, that the elections are interfering with the uh, uh, fundraising, 
Well, at WBAI, we fundraise 91 days this year, or 92 if you count 9-11 also. There is no time when you can hold any election when it's not going to interfere with WBAI raising money. This is true of some other stations too. Uh, furthermore, um, moving this thing so that you have this very narrow window, narrowing down the amount of time people have to uh, become um, uh, candidates and all of that, of course, this does favor people with these big organized slates and all of that, and it disenfranchises the various members, uh, listener members especially, and some staff too, who are not in slates, who have to do it on their own. It takes a longer time for them to get the signatures and to organize all of their stuff, rather than having, you know, some faction boss come over and say, here's your statement and here's your signatures and you're free to go. Uh, and and uh, I think, so I think putting that thing, uh, chopping up that time, cutting it in half like this, is a very, very bad idea. In addition, the time when it's done, I think, enhances the amount of participation in our elections. People are used to elections in the fall. Now, uh, the, having an election at some other time of year, I think, is going to uh, really cause a problem because it will make it so that we will have a, a harder time reaching a quorum of the electorate. I think, I think that could be a real danger there. Um, and, and also, um, people doing it in the fall, they, they get motivated to vote at all. On top of which, even doing it in odd numbers, it's going to, uh, going to impact the New York City elections sometimes. We have elections in odd years uh, at times in this city. So it, it really doesn't um, uh, go very far towards enhancing the number of people who will vote. I think it will make it so we'll have fewer voters. And that's a danger. Uh, I'm against increasing the uh, uh, term, I'm against making the term four years and I'm very against the idea of unlimited, no term limits at all. That's nuts. Uh, you know, having no term limits at all, I think, is time is betrayal of everything that I've done. Gotcha. Ray. I just promise I'm going to The item, uh, first, this is not uh, handing power to the National Board. This is going to be voted on by every single uh, delegate uh, body in each station each listening area and, and by the PNP. Uh, elections are run by the national and, 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 and local election uh, supervisors. Uh, it is clear that the process that we have it interferes, is interfered by, uh, for example, the national election. We've seen station, I mean two stations last time could not meet quorum uh, because they, and, and, and clearly interfered, in spite of what's happening in BAI, it clearly interfered with their fundraising period where uh, people running for office could not get proper time to get on the air and talk to the, to the electorate and motivate them properly and present a position, including those who don't run on the screen, particularly those who don't run on the screen. I would need the air to, to, to have their, 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 their position presented. Uh, this, uh, there was one point, one more point that I wanted to address. Uh, and. Uh, Clearly not working the way it is now. Now, in terms of uh, four years, in terms of unlimited, this this body is not choosing to say that we want unlimited. We put, we're choosing to put the choice of unlimited in front of the listeners, so they will decide whether they want it or not. Let's be very clear about that. The decision by the PNB was not to say that's what we want. It was to put in front of the the, 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 the voting, uh, the, the three bodies and the listeners three choices. One of which is whether they want a limited choice or not. Is I'm sorry, a limited term. Is there a form requirement? Andrea. Madam Chair, I am, well, and the rest of the board also, I am elect, I am, uh, and everyone, I am against uh, all of these amendments. Of, uh, I'm against the uh, time, limit, time frame change. It, it uh, has most of the time is being uh, done in the summer when people are sporadically here. I am particularly against trying to avoid uh, marathon fundraising time periods because I think this would be an excellent time 
when uh, programming about elections and about campaigns could be expanded flexibly and would raise money for the station. We would have open, honest discussions about what people's visions are for the station, what people feel about the station, what the history and the conflicts and issues are, so that people could understand what's going on and make an informed vote. And I'm hoping that eventually the station staffs and, and, uh, and the uh, elections uh, supervisors and the listeners will come to this conclusion and we'll be able to work together so that we can have an informed electorate. I think that uh, we would raise a lot of money and I would really like the chance to test this out. The time frame eliminates a lot of people. The summertime is a very uh, volatile, I mean a flexible time. People are here, people are not here. I do not understand the purpose of the change to the summer. I do not uh, necessarily I disagree with four-year terms. I would like the time to think about that. I, I, but basically, I would prefer, and I think it's recommended, and I think we should work on the question of elections costs. Of course, if we were raising more money, that would be a lesser issue. Uh, because I think it's important that listeners and uh, staff be discussing the issues of the station frequently. And the elections are a time when people will have uh, the ability to discuss it. Uh, I don't know that a, a longer term limit would help, uh, you know, um, would help us address these issues uh, fairly. I think people need to be uh, addressing them more frequently. I also, uh, uh, in terms of maximum term limits, that, I mean, in terms of term limits, that's an open question, so I can't necessarily uh, uh, disagree with that, but uh, with all three of them, I disagree with the fact that they are really basically retroactive bylaws. They start with the election that we are in. They should start at least with the next election, and I'm very suspicious of the motive uh, for putting them in the election in which we are in. People need time to, uh, the, the election in which it should, that's a, constitutes a retroactive operation, and I think it's very unfair to the listeners and the delegates. Uh, candidates and to the electorate. You vote. You never vote on changing the rules midstream. You vote, you vote on starting them at X date. And I also think it would give us time to really consider these bylaws more thoroughly. They may have been noticed, but we haven't been considering them or discussing them, and various positions have not been discussed at large by the populace. Three. Three. Thanks. Uh, a number of things. The proposal is to have these bylaws be put before the vote. The proposed bylaws changes be put before the um, before the membership, so that no one is being asked to say, "I personally think this is the great the greatest idea." You're being asked to make it possible for the membership, the people we claim to represent, to have their say, and that's that's blocking this uh, proposal. Is in fact saying. I'm going to decide for you what you need to do, rather than allow you the opportunity to decide. Um, there are very clear restrictions on the PNB authority to make any change. They have to observe a particular timeline. We again want to try to avoid the fund drives. This has been something that has come up in every one of the, what is it now, three elections I think we've had. Um, there are periods where they cannot go below a certain, uh, a certain minimum number of days for nominations. They are required to observe pretty much the same intervals as in the more detailed timeline that Bob read out. With regard to the, uh, the calendar, the shortening of the nomination period, the nomination period right now is two months. In every single election, uh, local and national election supervisors <coughs> have reported that in fact nothing happens for the first seven weeks of that period. In fact, the, the blot of uh, nominations come in not just during the last week, <laughs> but usually the last day and by changing the way the uh, time is apportioned during the entire campaign you actually allow more work uh, more time rather for the detailed work that uh, both the checkers of lists and the people mailing and preparing the ballots uh, have to do with regard to the uh, concern about it not being in the regular election season what happens is that many people within Pacifica are very active in terms of local grassroots politics and because they are involved in national elections and in local elections, very often some of the people who we might as a board and as a station most benefit from are absorbed in these other elections and can't lend a hand, whether they are interested in voting, in running 
as candidates or simply participating in the process in other ways, in supportive ways. So actually by shifting the election, um, our elections, away from national elections, first of all, people can actually focus on the fact that we're having elections. Right now, it's, you know, it takes quite a bit of attention uh, or quite a bit of effort to, to get many people involved, which may be why we've had such difficulty making quorums um, in various areas. The, um, both the, the, the term length and the term limits are intended to maximize the experience that we have on the board. Very often someone gets on the board and by the time they figure out what's going on, <laughs> on the way out, you're some people seem to take longer than others. I'm sorry, you're in time. Okay, that's fine, thanks. Okay. Yes, Alex. Yes, I, uh, I intend to vote against all the bylaws amendments. <clears throat> I think they just enshrine uh, uh, a greater uh, a, a crystallization of the undemocratic forces that have taken over the Pacifica Foundation since 2001. Uh, I'm not convinced at all by any of the rationalizations for these bylaws amendments. For instance, um, in his motivating talk, Bob Letterer said that the uh, changing the timeline will avoid conflicting with the national elections. Now, I can't for the life of me understand how that's supposed to work. Is it uh, that uh, a Pacifica uh, listener, a WBI activist, is suddenly going to stop his activities on behalf of the uh, Bush-Cheney uh, political line in order to vote for somebody for the LSB? This makes no sense to me. Um, yeah, these are specious arguments. Uh, extending and, and then uh, bringing, uh, bringing up the timeline into the middle of August really makes little sense because uh, the middle of August is basically a dead time for politicking. Everybody knows people are away or they're not away and they don't want to deal with these kind of things. Fall is the time when uh, traditionally people want to get back into the uh, rhythm of life and the rhythm of politics. And uh, if that holds true for national elections, I, there's no reason it shouldn't be holding true for Pacifica elections. Uh, extending the terms is a very is a very poor idea, I think. A four-year term for this kind of a board makes very little sense. This is uh, it's not that kind of a board. This is uh, this is not a board where people are basically uh, elected for half of their lifetimes. Uh, they're elected to serve. A certain function for a limited period of time and then they move on or they or that's the way it should work uh, it does maybe it hasn't worked as well so, so far but uh, this will uh, these bylaws amendments will make it even worse I think uh, as far as uh, the fact that the elections are expensive well yes that's it's certainly a lot cheaper not to have elections or to have fewer elections I, I certainly agree with that but uh, well, if you claim to support dem democracy or any kind of mod modicum of democracy, then you need elections, and uh, there is a cost involved. Uh, that's the way it is. Okay. Okay, we have here, here. we have Casey Peters back on the phone, and I think that it you know since it's time for somebody who's in favor to speak in favor, now would be a good time to ask him to speak. We need him by a microphone. Over. You went on the speaker. Can you stop? Hold on a second. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, Casey Peters here. Uh, some of you have known for years. Others of you I have not met. Uh, but I want to make clear that it was none of the delegates. It was I who put forward the four-year term, um, uh, and that is uh, basically for two reasons. One is that um, people who were elected to the board of KPS testing um, last year complained that, that if they just were starting on the board, 
new election cycle was underway, and uh, half the board was either uh, looking to run for re-election or was uh, you know looking forward to uh, vacating their seat, and that really interfered with the whole governance process. Also, the fact that, uh, as somebody just said, um, uh, elections uh, tend to pick up in the fall, and of course this uh, election schedule, as, as we're proposing, uh, would be um, in the early fall. But, but one of the big problems last year was our interfering with the, um, the national election, the congressional election. in California were uh, reading their government ballot pamphlets and, and, and opened their Pacifica ballot pamphlets. And we did not make film in, in Los Angeles. We had to have a two-week extension. That two-week extension went over Thanksgiving weekend and also over the Pacifica Archives fundraiser. So um, it was only due to my wife making 600 telephone calls to KPFK members randomly that we were able to reach quorum by five ballots. So uh, basically the, the speaker saying, oh, for your term, we should, we should continue to uh, our, our elections with, uh, with the government elections is saying that uh, we, we shouldn't reach quorum and therefore we should extend the term of the people who are already seating. seated. My proposal was for a four-year term with no consecutive terms. That is, after four years, you have two years off, and then you, then you can run for another four years. I think that way you stay fresh and not burn out, and also voters don't burn out by having elections two out of every three either. That's also something that I'm sure you know, the programmers at the speech and we resent the intrusion of elections on, on their... Uh, so uh, there's a whole lot of reasons to support these measures, and I would uh, really ask you to, to con every single national election supervisor has said in their report that the election timeline does not work. And I can tell you that I am dreading having to try to get the 10 different ballot pamphlets ready uh, next week and get them to the printers and the mailing house and get them uh, to, to the voters on time. And I know we're going to have all the terrible problems we've had in the past with uh, people not getting their ballots. And, um, and, and you know, this, this can be helped if we adopt the, the new timeline and also the whole idea of reaching quorum and having a, a, a smoother governance will be helped if we go for the four-year term. I'm, I'm absolutely opposed to the, no, the idea of no term limits, and I also oppose the idea of somebody serving eight years in a row. I think it should be you know, four, four years on, two years off. So that, that's my personal position. But of course, I'm neutral in, in my, uh, in my uh, administration of the election, and you know, Casey, whatever happens, happens. Casey, are you, are you, I'm sorry, you're about in time there. Are, are you done? Uh, yes, I think my rant is a bit open. <laughs> I'd be glad to answer them. All right, but um, I'm, I'm actually going to just call on other people to speak because we only have uh, four minutes left in our discussion. Thank you very kindly. I really appreciate everybody giving me a chance to have my say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What? Thanks, Casey. All right. Steve. Some of the comments made um, strike me as being incorrect. One member noted that. Uh, we're only voting here to allow the entire membership to get a chance to vote on these uh, propositions. That's not, that's not true. What will happen is that these motions will go on the ballot with the implicit endorsement of all the LSBs and the PNB, and 99% of the membership will vote for them as a matter of course. So that's not really what's happening. Uh, the second point is one of the arguments made uh, for shorter terms is to uh, cut the cost of elections. The figure of $200,000 
is is uh, not really um, a, a, a realistic figure for the simple reason that um, in a prior election I showed this board, the station, and the national board how they could offset the cost of the elections by getting the money back from members. And the first election with almost no time and a very casual approach, we made back the entire cost of that election, $20,000. This was never picked up in succeeding elections. Uh, the board dropped the ball, and none of the other stations decided to do it. And so these elections cost us $100,000 to $150,000 more than they should. I think the cost of elections with proper uh, offset appeals made would be minimal and not $200,000 or anywhere near it. So that's not a good argument uh, in favor of these motions. OK. Mitchell? Not yet. Is case is still No. Well, I'd like to speak ambivalently about these motions because I think that there could be a better process in developing. Yes. That also does not carry. Yes, it needs 13 to carry. All right, now uh, the amendment package number three, a range of term limit options. Bob? Yes, uh, offering three options on delegate term limits, maximum one term, maximum two terms, uh, and no term limit, or uh, maintaining the, uh, the fourth option would simply be both, both no and maintain the current term limit. Yes, since I have to vote first, the Simmons first three are offered as a package. Okay, what's that? No, um, our Pacifica's council is advised this should be arranged as a, um, a comparative vote with the three new options and the one old option of keeping the bylaws as, as keeping the term limits as they are in the current bylaws. Okay. So it would offer a four way choice, essentially. Okay. So, so are, we, are we voting for voting term limits? Voting to a range of term limits to be put before the listeners for them to vote oh, on which oh, they oh, prefer. Oh, 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 term limits. It's voting on whether to put it before the listeners. That's yes, right. exactly as the previous one. Oh, and do we need a roll call vote on this? I don't care. All right. Please I, come to order. We're not voting on the options, Madam Chair. We're not voting on the options. No, we're not. We're voting whether to put these four options before the listeners or not. Or the listeners and staff, I should say, before the entire membership, for the entire membership to vote upon. What point of information? Yes. Are we voting as to which one of these options? No. No. We're voting to put all of these options before the members for them to decide. All right, roll call vote. Okay, this is on term limits before the membership. Betty Aka. Yes for democracy. Oh. <laughs> Warren Singh. Yes. Yes. Brooks, yeah. Brown. No. No. Clay. Yes. Yes. Cohen. Abstain. Abstain. Kathy Davis. No. No. Lisa Davis. Yes. Yes. Fishman. Oh, no. No. Flounders. Yes. Yes. Griffin. Yes. Yes. LaFarris. Yes. Yes. Letter. Yes. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Yes. Martin. No to forever boards. No. Rose. No. Was that no? No. No. Robert. Martin. Yes. Yes. Ross. No. No. Steinberg. Well, let me 
Black. Have you voted? No. Kilgower? Yes. 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 Twelve yes. Seven nays and one abstention. I'm presenting term limits, so it doesn't pass. It doesn't carry. Thank you for saving me. Uh, it doesn't carry. That. That, that does not. That does not carry. It requires a vote of 13. Okay. Next item on the agenda was Nia's motion. Madam Chair. Yes. Another question of privilege. Yes. Uh, I have to leave now. I'm sorry, I have to leave, but I want to. I want to. Uh, notice that the motion you're about to discuss is phrased the same way as the Red Queen uh, conducts herself. First, first the sentence and then the trial. The motion should probably be expressed as investigating whether Steve Brown has done the things you say. And then you have to substantiate them because you're making the charge. You cannot, you cannot post, and I'm putting you a notice now about libel law, you cannot post oh. as individuals. All right, please come to order. That finds me guilty of charges that, that first of all, you have not proved that I've that I been made, that I've been made, charges that you have not substantiated. Now, generally, the directors of the board are, are, are not liable for action of the foundation, but in this case, you're going to be liable as individuals. Okay. All right. Okay. Please come to order. Please. Please come to order. Okay. I will go. What about public comment? Yeah, well, this guy is... Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, do you have the full text? Is that, that in your hand, the full text of the yes. entire motion? Uh, I don't the ten, know. A 10-page document? That's it. uh, it's a 10-page document? Right on. I would prefer that you send me something by certified mail. Oh, you have it. Okay, okay. I'm going to ask, uh, well, well, first of all, it's, all right, we're, it's now 940. I'm going to ask Father Lawrence Lucas to please be my eyes tonight, as he has been. And thank you, Father Lucas. Here you go. It's nice and big, too. Just, just, just the motion. Here, you don't need that sign. It's, it's just one thing. Wait, I, 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 as he's getting ready to read the motion, excuse me. As he's getting, as he's getting ready, as he's getting ready, as he's getting ready to read the motion, Serene offered something to fill in the blank. And if there's no, if you have no objection, then you should put that there. That's it. Oh, it's there I for him. Quickly so we can get out of the okay. Yes, thank you. What is it? It's right there. Okay. All right. Uh, Father Point Lucas, please. Father, please. Point Father Lucas, will now. Please. Yes. Point of order. It's now 9:40. This meeting was scheduled to end at 9:30. I move to adjourn. It wasn't scheduled. This actually, the delegates' meeting was not scheduled to uh, adjourn at any time. The said, "What time do we have to be out of here?" And no. But there was no vote. Excuse me. Please come to order. There was no vote with regard to the end time of the delegates' meeting. We simply had time limits set on each item. Oh, so we could go on until 12. Then. Good. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, please do not speak out of turn and waste okay. more time. The point of order is we were supposed to have not only a delegates meeting, but a local station board meeting. That's correct. And if we continue discussing this ridiculous motion, we will not have a, have a chance to have a local station board meeting, and we will not have a chance to discuss the budget. Nia? Excuse me, please come to order. Excuse me. Um, um, they don't want to discuss the budget. May we stay until 
Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Please do not continue to use up time with points of order. For Father Lucas is to read the motion. What? Yes. We have a one point of information. If you don't mind, do you mind if he has a point of information? All right. She minds. So, so it'll have to wait. Father Lucas, please read. Motion for a delegates meeting to consider removal of delegate Steve Brown. Result that the BAI Assembly of Delegates will hold a meeting no later than 11:607 from 7 to 8.30 p.m. for the sole purpose of considering the removal of Delegate Steve Brown as per the motion below, and that notice of the meeting and the purpose for which it is called shall be immediately posted on the WBAI LSB section of the WBAI website. Further resolved that the following motion will be considered at that meeting. Whereas WBAI Delegate and Local Station Board LSB member Steve Brown has made repeated unsubstantial allegations, unsubstantiated allegations circulated to large email lists of WBAI listeners that WBAI program director Bernard White is involved in the disappearance of listener funds and in concomitantly depriving listeners of their station membership and resultant privileges, such as voting for LSB candidates are becoming eligible for election to the LSB themselves. A few of many examples are included in Appendix 1. And whereas Mr. Brown has also extended these allegations to other station personnel, and whereas no WBAI local station board member has the right to make unsubstantiated and defamatory allegations against WBAI managers or staff, i.e. without the specific foundation, having accorded any investigation or due process to the accused staff member or without giving the accused staff member a chance to respond to such accusations. And whereas Mr. Brown has publicly and unilaterally called upon WBAI listeners not to send their membership funds to the station's authorized address based on the previously mentioned unsubstantiated allegation against WBAI personnel, but instead to send them directly to his personal home address. And whereas Mr. Brown widely distributed his public calls to direct donations away from the station's address, linked to unsubstantiated allegations of theft of membership and funds and other misconduct against WBAI program director Bernard White and other staff members via emails to large email lists of WBAI listeners, and whereas Mr. Brown's claims that monies sent to WBAI cannot be trusted to be deposited and recorded properly run counter to repeated on-air and website announcements over the last several years that station supporters should send donations to a P.O. box as opposed to the station's street address, funds retrieved from which are directly deposited into WBAI's bank account, and whereas Mr. Brown failed to heed the strong warning emailed to Mr. Brown by Pacifica's legal counsel, stating that Mr. Brown's widely distributed email was completely inappropriate, and that Mr. Brown should send a follow-up email to all those on his list advising them that A, he had erred in urging the BAI supporters to send funds to the station's official not to send funds to the station's official mailing address, and B, he should advise them that they should send any funds they want to donate to, donate to the station's official mailing address. Whereas the WBAI local station board voted to disassociate itself on March 16, 2006, from an earlier long-running series of unsubstantiated, defamatory, and racially inflammatory allegations by Mr. Brown against program director Bernard White and other WBAI staff, seeks Appendix Roman numeral 2. And whereas Mr. Brown failed to follow the call contained in that motion for all LSB members to desist from making statements that prejudice performance of WBAI management personnel, perpetuate racist stereotypes, indulge in personal attacks on management and staff, and undermine listener financial support for the station. And whereas 
Mr. Brown's continuing defamatory statements against Mr. White as an agent of the station have created an atmosphere of suspicion of suspicion that seriously hinders the nation the station's ability to raise funds and also injures the entire station's reputation among its communities of listeners. And whereas Mr. Brown's egregious conduct has breached his obligations of good faith service to Pacifica, has violated his fiduciary responsibilities to the alienated in the Pacifica bylaws, and has potentially subjected the network to litigation, be it resolved that pursuant to Pacifica bylaws, Article 4, Section 9D, removal of delegates, WBAI Delegate Steve Brown shall be removed from the position of WBAI Delegate upon the fair and reasonable determination by a two-third vote of all the delegates for WBAI for conduct that is adverse to the best interests of the Foundation. Thanks. Um, Okay, Nia can motivate her, her motion. Oh, okay. Is there, is there a second? Oh, there's a second. There is a second. All right, okay. Nia? Okay, I, I, I'm sorry that um, Delegate Brown is, is not here, but that's okay. I'm sure that he'll be duly informed. You know, I read his August 13, 2007 email many times and tried very hard to find the overwhelming alleged goodwill his supporters claim he had, but I did not find it. What I found instead is a provocative email reeking with one, an undermining of the station's fiscal integrity, slander of progressive program director Bernard White accusing him of deliberate theft of listener or listeners' donations, three, defamation and slander of the staff, four, serious castigation of the station and ridicule of the staff, and five, peculiarities in terms of the timing of our upcoming elections, the October drive, carts playing at the station announcing the new post office box and appeals by engineers and producers asking listeners to send in their donations. This behavior is not only counterproductive, it is very irresponsible. The fourth and fifth paragraphs of Mr. Of, of Delegate, Brown, Delegate Brown's email are very <laughs> striking to me, and they say, quote, now for the touchy issue, where should you mail your membership checks, unquote, and quote, what is that, quote, unquote, no, why is that, quote, unquote, touchy? Why not mail it to the station? Delegate Brown, I would assume, knows the, 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 that some of the meanings of touchy is easily ignited and flammable. Water. And this is exactly There's a the point of order. Of There's a point of order. Could I finish my point sentence? The point of order takes oh, precedence. There's a point of order. Yes, Mr. Cohen? The politeness yes, should Mr. take Cohen? precedence. Yes, it should, yes. but it, it well, I waited this far to see where it was going. Are we conducting the trial here and now? No. Are no. we? Well, yeah. this is simply uh, putting on the record the, the reason that why she wants a hearing for Steve Brown. The He's read twice already. Hearing, that's correct. But the, she's not arguing it. She's arguing that without without a the chance think, for the no, defense. She's, to she's motivating the reason to have it. It's in order. I mean, it's it's great that she's it's been done for the cameras that are here for the first time in ages. Thank you, but for the election, but that's not what this should be about. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. That is not I, that point is not well taken. Nia, please continue. As vice chair of this local of station order. board and chair of the Pacific National Audit Committee, there's a point of order. This is, this is going to happen throughout the. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. That's exactly right. That's what will happen. There's a point of order. Please come to order. The point this of order discussion. Does should be limited to the discussion about whether this item should be on the agenda for the no, next that, meeting. Oh, for that the, no, for you mean whether or not this should be, there it should should be a delegate meeting? It should not be about the substance of the motion that would be discussed at the next meeting. Well, this is out of order. I'm not sure how else she can motivate that. 
Nia, please continue. She has to motivate it somehow that it's that it's that it's appropriate for it to be on the agenda at the next delegates okay. meeting that is to be held, as she said, uh, no later okay. than November. Uh, Vice Chair of the Board of Station Board Chair of the Pacific National Board Audit the Committee. The and by the way, the Secretary of the Audit moved. Committee also sits on this board. It's been moved and seconded to overrule the chair's the ruling that it is in order for Nia Bediako to motivate her motion. No, 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 no. That's not it. Uh, what is it? Which 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 ruling are you moving to? Which ruling are you moving are you moving to? Uh, what what ruling are you uh, moving to? That the content challenge. of what is being the ruling that the content of what is being read the slanderous attacks on Steve Brown are allowable here Please rather do not. than to be placed in the hearing itself. <laughs> Okay. okay. All right. If, if if people actually want to discuss this motion, I think we should just move to a vote immediately about whether or not to uphold the chair's ruling. Uh, is there any objection to moving directly to a vote? Yeah. I, I, oh, you'd like, like to, to discuss uphold, it? I'd like to uphold the uh, the uh, motion to appeal. I you want to, you want to argue to that? Yes, Madam Chair, I want to argue that. Okay, I, we have six minutes, have five and a half minutes left. Yes, All right. this, this, this agenda item. The, what about the budget? He, he, he can, no, we have five minutes that. left, and when that's done, with, we're going to come to a vote. Madam Chair, do I yes. have a floor or You, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> Thank Actually, you. you don't, because I get to speak she first. She just woke up. Okay, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, yeah. Um, I think that Nia has to be able to make her points as to why it's important to have this on the agenda at the next meeting. Now, regardless of how people may find, I understand that the content of this is very controversial. But the fact that it's difficult and controversial doesn't mean that she doesn't get to give her reasons why this should be on, that we should have this delegates meeting to consider this. If she needs to, she needs, I mean, if, if we're going to consider removing a delegate from this body, that is a very, very serious matter. And if she cannot give her reasons why she thinks it's a serious enough matter for this board to take up at the next delegates meeting, uh, she's got to be able to do that. Miss, yes, or Paul. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. The, I, I agree with the member's appeal of the ruling because what's before us is a motion to hold a delegates meeting regarding this issue. Uh, we have this long, closely spaced motion here that uh, if people read it, uh, they certainly get the gist of what uh, the member is trying to say. Uh, to now have the member go into an actual uh, set of serious accusations that really could only be brought up at trial, this is a violation of basic due process for anyone at all. And so it's, and it's also out of order because it's not speaking to the motion. The motion is to bring this to the next delegates meeting. It is not to do this trial at this meeting. So therefore, the member could talk about bringing a motion to the next meeting. Uh, however, I would say that it is indeed slander for the uh, member to start making all of these charges. Roberts makes clear, and I'm, I still disagree with the chair about the idea that uh, this all gets done uh, out in the open like that. Yep, it should be an executive law. session. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe you'll, that's why I'm gonna call, by the way, I'm gonna call, uh, right now I wanna make a motion that the, uh, the motion on this be a roll call vote because I would like to be on record as against it so that if somebody does sue, you guys get sued, I don't get sued. However, uh, the, the, the member should speak to her motion and not to try to uh, make a trial happen a month ahead of time. Does anybody else wish to speak to this? All right, then bring it to a vote. All right, roll call vote on upholding the chair's ruling. No, 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 no. Without objection? For, Madam Chair, the, the roll, roll call, call vote. vote. Madam Chair, the roll call vote was on this motion. Here. I understand that you that you asked for a roll call vote on that, and when we come to it, we'll we'll have it. Right. Okay. If there's no objection, but somebody has just called for a roll call vote on the question of whether to uphold the chair's ruling. We have uh, we have two minutes and fifteen seconds left on this entire bite on this entire item. So if there's no objection, we'll have a roll call vote. Yes, upholds you. Yes, upholds me. Okay, the motion is to, uh, 
The motion is challenging the chair's ruling that it is in order for Nia Bediaco to continue with her motivation of her motion. For the theater. All those, okay. Will the secretary please call the roll? Bediaco. Yes. That does not carry. No abstentions? Who didn't vote? Nobody it doesn't, there's, there's no abstentions on a vote like this. We now have uh, five seconds. What? I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, the motion to uphold, I'm sorry, the motion to challenge does not carry. The motion to uphold the chair's ruling does carry. Sorry. Okay. We are now at time for this, this item and we must bring it to a vote unless there's an extension of time. And somebody has called for a roll call vote. I like to. We're voting, now voting on your motion. Yes. Can you call for a roll call vote without objection? I know I brought a long time. On Nia's motion. Maybe. Yes. I'm calling, I'm calling for a delegates meeting no later than November 6, 2007. Okay, please, no editorializing on Bond, anyone's part. There's been quite a bit of that all around. Let's all just around. Call, let's just have the vote. It's gross. It's gross. Fishman. I, I was wondering, Fishman. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Okay. All right. That that brings 
That that would bring our delegates meeting to a close as soon as somebody moves to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Without objection? Okay, then I'm calling now I'm going to call to order the local station board. No public comment. Without objection for the remaining time that we can be here. If everybody has their agenda for Board the of Order, Madam yes. Chair. Yes. Is the chair attempting to call a local station board meeting at this time? Yes. The chair Madam is chair, calling the local out station board meeting to order. Madam Chair, I would point out that this would be an adjourned meeting. Oh, that's correct. This the would adjourned be an adjourned meeting. meeting. Is, is, yes, it's not. We voted. already have the agenda. The agenda yes. says it will adjourn no later than 9.45 p.m. It is now two minutes after 10. Okay, well, if we are to... All right, I'm going to ask for a motion to extend so that we can consider the budget. And for the purpose of considering the budget, because that would also require a two-thirds vote in any case or without objection, to either, you know, both extend the time and add to the agenda a, a further consideration of the budget. Yes, Jamie. Point of information. Yes. Uh, how long can we stay here? I'm He's there. We'll keep going oh, until. There he is. There he is. He's here. He's right here. Got a question for you. Yes. When do we have? How late can we stay? We have one more item of business. How late can we? Go ahead. Okay. So we could stay, all right. Is there a deadline by the end of the Yankee game? Yankee game. Okay, 10 15. Thank you. All right. 10 15 gives us a further half hour in which to even. 10 15 gives us a. 10 15. Well, I'm very I could get up to say 10.15. Oh, okay. So, if, please get up. Can you, can you do me a favor? Please consult with JD for a moment. Um, in the meantime, in, in the meantime, in the meantime, we do want to we do want to set time so that we are not here on that. Yes. Yes. I understand. That's why I asked Nia to please. Discuss. Um, he said, Mr. point of order, he said okay. very clearly, take as long as you need I to finish what we're I saying. understand that, but I think we need to set an end time in order well, not, not to if either abuse him or ourselves. So right now, Nia is negotiating that. And while she's negotiating that, I think people could consider that we will, um, when we have a time that we can stay until, that people will consider perhaps a motion that is a dual, that we won't necessarily divide this motion to say that this meeting will, will continue until X time. And please come to order. Please come to order. And please come to order. Please come to order that this meeting will continue in, until such time as, as 10.30, until 10.30 for the purpose of a reconsideration of the budget. And that way we get our two-thirds vote done for both things at once. Is that agreeable to everybody? Or is there any objection? Yeah, uh, all right, and, 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 please, I need to ask, uh, add one piece of information. That out of, I, out of politeness, it would be a, a wonderful thing if we pass the hat at the end of this meeting in order to contribute something for the use of the space. Madam Chair, I yes. object. I object, again, we're being rushed through this item when, the, when the man was very kind and generous and said we needed time to complete whatever time we needed to complete it. Okay. Why didn't the board at that point try to decide how much time we needed? So you don't it, want to stay. All right. Let I me mean, suggest. Let me suggest. Let me suggest if I, may I make a suggestion? Yes. I'm not wasting may, time. No, please, please come to order. Everybody, come to order and allow me to please make a suggestion. We definitely need to at least start on this without further ado. Now, if we come to 10.30 and we're, and we're totally bogged down and have no agreement on anything that perhaps we can renegotiate, but I suggest that we get moving swiftly and cease to argue over the details so that we can actually do this. So is there any objection to... Objection. At least until objection when is public? That's true. Uh, 
Oh, oh it's more to public okay. comment. That's right. Yeah, well, there's been about an hour of public comment at this adjourned meeting so far, but I will definitely integrate it, as always, into this, into this um, discussion. Um, into this discussion. Well, if we adjourn now, there's no public comment. Madam? Okay. Madam, if, there's, if, there, if, we, if we continue to speak about, about whether or not we're agreeable to moving on, we will never move on. Madam Chair, you asked me for to, to, to suggest a time. I no, I, I suggest the same is, time I said before, an hour. All right, we'll take these we'll take these votes in order. All those in favor of continuing the meeting by an hour in order to reconsider the budget, please raise your hand. Yes, by an hour. One, two, three, four, five. You have your hand up to be six? No, there's six. And seven, an hour. And all those opposed? One, two, three, four, five. Just fire the workers. It's not worth an hour of your time. Just fire them now. Six, seven. Yeah. That does not carry. All those eight, all those in favor. Please, uh, members of the board, we're having a meeting. Um, and I think there's room now for everybody at the table. Uh, all those in favor of extending to 10.30 for the purpose of discussing the budget, please raise your hand. Yes. Who's making this chair? Oh, right. All right, somebody has to make a motion. I move to extend till 10.30. Second. For the purpose of discussing the budget. For the purpose of discussing the budget. All those in favor. I move to amend by 15 minutes to make it 45 minutes so we can have a real discussion. All right, let's vote on the amendment to make it 45 minutes. All those in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six. To extend. All opposed. To extend. One. Seven. Two, we had seven three, four, five, six. Does not carry, requires a two thirds vote. Re recap that. There. All right, all those opposed? No. I want the record to show that I have been asked for a second recount and I have acceded to it. By our Paul Martin has asked me for a second recount in this, uh, this yes. evening and I have acceded to it. All those in favor of extending by 45 minutes to discuss the budget, please raise your hand. One, two, yes, one, two, three, four, five, Six, all opposed? Four, eight, seven, seven. Seven. All opposed. Excuse me. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that does not carry. Um, we're, okay, so now we're back to 10.30. All in favor of extending to 10.30 in order to discuss the budget? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to ask everybody that's in favor to raise their hand and keep it up until I'm done counting. It's too confusing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All opposed. One, two, three, four, five. That does carry. By two thirds majority. Whoa, six, six, six. Ten, eleven. Okay, well then it doesn't carry. Then we we won't put that item on the agenda, and we will go on to the no, next agenda no. item. No. We'll go on to the next agenda. Point of order, Madam Chair. Point of order, Madam Chair. You have another motion to offer. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. That particular motion was to extend the time of the meeting itself. My point of order originally was that this meeting, this LSB meeting, was scheduled to end at 9.45 and it was after 10. It's right. still after 10. Right. We have just failed to extend the time for the meeting. Oh, that's correct. Okay, so unless there's a further um, offer to extend the time of the meeting, we are going to adjourn this meeting without having reconsidered the budget. Uh, motion to have listener comment now. No. Oh, wow. oh our, okay. Said, yes, yes. I there's a, actually there's a listener who wishes to make a comment. There are a number of listeners, but we need to it's call the motion. First, second, second. I'm sorry. Yes. I want to make two comments. I got the crap out of stop working with all these motions and all these things. Cut the nonsense out and start working. That's what you're here for. Not to play this clown game. Secondly, somebody says they're putting brown, and I don't mean it to them, I mean it to you. And secondly, somebody said putting Mr. Brown out is putting democracy in. Do you know what democracy is? 
telling the truth. If Mr. Brown has charges against That's Bernard one, White, one, he should go to ten, the police. Ten. Get him, get the proof, and go to the Pacific border. Democracy is not lying. Democracy is not in the windows. That is like Shakespeare's behavior. That is bad behavior. It's immoral and it's immoral. Democracy is a great responsibility to tell the truth. I don't know much about what's going on here, but if my neighbor has says lies about me, that is not democracy. That is not the democracy I was taught in school. Let this man go to the police with these charges. These are very serious charges. Let him go to the Pacific Board. The one Every time on. he said Bernard did something, give us a time, give us what he did, give us the people involved. Don't confuse this kind of American democracy we have now where we have a man in the White House who because of democracy went to war with a lie. And that's all I have to say. So don't get your ideas mixed up. Democracy is true. You are getting more airtime. You are getting more airtime. You are getting more airtime. All right, one second at a time. Okay. Here, here. Here, here. here, here. Okay, hang, hang on, hang on. We're in the middle. We are in the middle of our Paul Martin has made. We have to set a date for another meeting. I need, I need some information. Is that it? Is the public comment over? I want to settle some business first. I need. We need to decide. Uh, we need to decide when we're going to meet next and how we are going to get business done that was not done at this meeting, and then we can have public now. comment. Board of order, Madam Chair. Yes. If you're saying that listener comment now gets shut down, no, I'm not. No, no, no. Well, I did not like say No, I The fact is, like the fact is, Madam Chair. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll go back to the original point of order. We yeah. haven't extended the time for the meeting. The meeting is really over. The meeting is adjourned. So what are you? Gonna, you I know. will. I will note that we must set a time. We must set a time for a subsequent meeting. A. Actually, we already have set a time in October for a meeting. We have. Is, isn't that what we just passed this motion about no. we're going to go get somebody? No, we said no later than uh, November. Whatever. 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 November 6th, whatever. Okay. Now, what? All right, so what I, but let me just explain, and let me finish what I was saying, okay? What I was saying was we need to set the date of that meeting. I need some information about what the deadline is on us discussing the budget. Is there a deadline, Bob? 28th. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay, so we've blown that. Okay, so we've blown that. Um, so then, so then it's just a question of whether we're going to meet uh, whether what day we're going to meet on next? November fifth. That's a long way away. Please, please, based on the uh, order. Based on the Pacific calendar, right? Like I said before, now September September eighteenth. Madam Chair, if I may, if I may, yes. if I may, yeah. I checked the Pacific calendar. Yes. And if the only thing that's available, like I said before, we have October 29th, October 30th, October 31st. Okay, so. All right. And Madam you Chair. Need, you need, and then you had November, then you said November, what, 5th? So if you, if you want to throw all those dates out there, I want to throw all those dates. Madam Chair, Shane is trying to if speak. I could, if I can please yes. make a proposal, since Mr. Brown is not quite certain what portion of October he'll be out of town, right? May I ask that when he, you know, I'm assuming, if it's a procedure or whatever, they have to give him some advance notice, so that sometime within the next ten days, he offers you several dates when he will be in town, all of them before November 6th, and that whatever those dates are, then, you know, the four officers will then, then notify the rest of the board of the date, which would then be the, the, the reconvening of the continuation of the LSB meeting and the delegates meeting. Because I think asking people to, right now, sort of choose a date at the end of October for uh, an LSB meeting, and then perhaps sometimes in the next week, uh, within a week of that, choose a date based on Mr. Brown's availability, is, you know, it's a busy okay. time. All right. A point of information? Yes. What if Mr. Brown says 
this is not available, what, then what? Well, if, if, well, we're going to offer Mr. Brown the opportunity to choose dates that work for him. He said he would be gone for a period of time within the month of October, not for the entire month of October. And we have a deadline of, of November 6th when we'd like to, to get this done. Okay. So Second. All right. One day. Second. I, I want to just suggest that without objection, um, we will hold both the delegates meeting and the continuation of this meeting that has yet to be continued. Um, on a date that will, that at Mr. Brown's convenience, and that the, as soon as the four officers know, we will hope to have this well within whatever time frame, 10 days in advance, how many, a series of dates. Within 10 days, not 10 days in advance. I have a lot too. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm please, 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 I'm speaking. I'm, we want to have this information in plenty of time to notify members, to give them plenty of time to find out. So whatever the notice time is. We'll be asking for a, a date from Mr. Brown, and then, when then we'll continue this. Within 10 days from now, we'll get the date from him. Okay. Second. Is there any objection? Can we hear this again? What is the proposal? This is the proposal, this the proposal is that the next meeting will be set to coincide with the delegates meeting that will be held at Mr. Brown's convenience. So this is So within 10 days, the motion is that within 10 days, we'll get, a, we'll get what, a date or dates? A series of dates from Mr. Brown which will then, the four officers will then uh, pick one. I don't know how we're going to If he doesn't respond, yes. don't leave us. And then, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. We'll notify the membership. Madam Chair, is this, so is this a motion to adjourn this meeting to that future time? Yes. No. And actually, yes, yeah, and excuse me. Excuse no, 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 no. Please, please, the, is, please. Is this a motion then, keeping it legal, to adjourn this meeting to a future to set the time to which to adjourn. Thank you. Yes. Yes. It's and not then, adjourned and meeting. Once, and once this motion has passed, then we will have public comment, if there's no objection. Is there any objection to public comment once this motion has passed? No objection no. to okay. public yes, comment, Andrew. Madam Chair, but I have a question. Yes. Right now, it seems that the motion said it was from 7 to 8.30, uh, the delegates meeting. Yes. Does that mean that there will not be a... Uh, we will not have the capacity, capability to extend it if necessary. I'm sorry, what? Will we have the ability to extend it if necessary? Yes, of course. Oh, we will. Yes, by two thirds vote. Okay, awesome. so all those in favor, do I, do I need to reiterate that proposal? No? All right, without yes. any objection. Just very clear. We're okay, very clearly. We're, to within, which to adjourn. With, we're setting the time to which to adjourn um, in the following manner. Within the next 10 days, Mr. Brown will be solicited for a series of dates during which he will be available. I'm sorry? Oh, he will provide. Within, within 10 days, Mr. Brown will provide the dates on which he is available. And based on those dates, what's your, the four officers will pick one and then advise this body with plenty of anticipation. <laughs> we hope. Inshallah. What? All sort of those. In, uh, is there any objection? What, to that? what sort of? Really? What sort of? Uh, advice, advice notice are we going to get? What you'll, you'll, well, if he is going to provide those dates within ten days, then we should be able to give the board notice within ten days. From well, yeah. Lead time. I mean, you know, are we going to know two weeks ahead of the, the date should. of the meeting? Well, that we can't that we can't totally predict because we don't know what dates Mr. Brown is going to offer. But we definitely want it to be as far in advance as possible. That's yes. for sure. In other words, as soon as we know, the board will know. But we much of this depends on Mr. Brown, as you know. Is there any objection? No. All right. Wait, I Moving object on. if it's linking the LSB meeting with the delegates meeting. I want the delegates meeting to stand alone. There's an objection to that. All right, we'll bring it to a vote then. All those in favor of so the motion, which I guess is Serene's motion at this point. Yep, it's Serene's motion. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Serene's motion that the yes. One and in the manner well, that I described. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, right seven. Fine, I counted him back there. How many more back there? All opposed. You have to count the hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The chair votes yes. Okay. 
So we have our the manner in which we're going to move to adjourn and it, public comment. If without objection, we'll move to public comment. Yes. I'm right. Please use the mic. Please use the mic. Please, but please don't stand right in front of the, the uh, chair. Uh, okay. First of all, I uh, attended a number of regular. Uh, what's that? Not on. Now it's on. Okay. Okay, I attended a number of radio committee uh, meetings, uh, and I want to thank the members of that committee, uh, Kathy Davis, Sean Rhodes, I see, um, Andrea Fishman, uh, Carol Burden, and several others, I'm sorry if I'm not naming everybody, for doing a fair, intelligent job of trying to arrange for an LSB report from the members of the LSB to the listeners and staff members to know what's going on, what hasn't gone on, uh, what the issues are, and, and see where people stand on them. I think it was very wrong of this body to uh, cut that off. I don't know if there ought to be another radio committee uh, report to the listeners. I haven't heard of any com uh, coming on. I think it's important that uh, people know what hasn't happened as much as what has happened in the last three years. Let me just give a, what I see from the number of meetings that I went to. Number one, there were efforts to stifle the opposition by the majority, to remove the opposition, an example of which we saw this evening, to prevent any change at the station that uh, insiders didn't uh, initiate themselves, and to prevent the listeners to know what's going on. If you succeed in removing Steve Brown, what you will have done is move an honest messenger. I don't know anything about what Bernard has and hasn't done. This body prevented investigation of such things. Charges were made not just by Steve Brown, but by the business manager when she was interim general manager of irregularities, and the majority on this board sir, set out to stifle her completely. That I was there. I was right, there. Excuse me. Please do not. Right. Excuse me. No, he has, wait a I never heard come to order. Please, please come to order immediately. Please come to order immediately. When 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 we have listener comment, please come to order. Please come to order. He has the floor. Please do not interrupt him. I can't deal with any criminal. Please do not interrupt him. That's it. He has the floor. Libel charges. I can say that the station has been run very inefficiently and very poorly from my point of view. I mentioned at a previous meeting that for three years in a row, in spite of paying significantly more than the minimum $25 for membership, uh, in spite of my coming in and volunteering to answer phones, there was no record of that. And for three years, I didn't receive my membership or get my ballot. This goes to my wife and about 30 people I could list on Long Island who have casually told me that that's how the station is run. It's inexcusable that a listener sponsored station doesn't care about its membership and has someone in, this, in the role of uh, membership at the time, I don't know who's doing it now, who doesn't take the trouble to keep records of volunteers when they come in, uh, who, who doesn't send out membership when uh, contributions have been made. Uh, I have reported this to this body uh, more than once. Have any of you gone to the general manager, gone to the membership person, and advised them of it, and asked them to change their procedures so it doesn't ever happen again? <coughs> well, Steve Brown did. I read his uh, email, and what he did was offer people who didn't have confidence in the membership <coughs> renewal basis at the station to send a check to the station to him, and he would see that it was delivered to the station. To me, that's a heroic thing to do. There's nothing improper, there's nothing illegal. It's an obligation of delegates to this body to try to raise funds for this station. And I can give you the names of several people on Long Island who walked away from this station. They said, the heck with it. Why should I make my contribution and not be considered a member and have the right to vote? So it's disgraceful, in my opinion, that you're bringing this action against Steve Brown. Everything that the man has said. I think has, you're coming near to time. If you could wrap it up. Very quickly, I will. Thank you for the extra couple of seconds. 
Uh, Steve Brown came out at the first time the LSB had to approve a budget, and he said, this is an unrealistic budget. He was called a racist for doing that by any number of people, maybe perhaps not those who are here right now, but I think some of you are. Uh, he's not a racist. He tried to be responsible, and it's not appreciated by those who don't want any change at the station. Thank you. Here, here. I see a large number of men lined up, and I see a woman who wishes to speak. Are the men willing to yield to the woman? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to concur with all that was just said about Steve Brown. There have been times when I have not concurred with the language that he chose to use in certain of his emails. But with what he did in this situation of giving people who would not otherwise have pledged to the station, who would not otherwise have uh, rejoined, who would not otherwise be able to vote, I think it was a very positive thing that he did. And I think that the way this is being conducted and so far it appears like a railroad. Um, there is supposed to be a trial. There is supposed to be presentation of both sides at that, at that um, delegate meeting where this is supposed to take place. The idea that the chair was allowing discussion of, of one side, discussion of the, um, the charges claimed against Steve Brown in order to just prove that there should be a delegates meeting that the motion should be presented was wrong. This, the, the motion should have been uh, presented in the sense that there have been charges alleged and uh, both sides should be able to have a say. That's how it should have been motivated. Now I'd like to also say a word about the radio committee. Since I have been a member of the radio committee for the past four or five months, um, I was very pleased with the June and July um, presentations that report to the listener from the LSB. They were interesting, they were informative, they gave diverse views of, the, of board members. Now, the committee was accused of not following the mandates of the committee. Now, there were two. Uh, one, one was that no LSB member who would be a potential candidate could speak during the candidate <coughs> period. Therefore, we, in order to make sure that those members got a chance to be on air, we had to have them in July. We also were mandated to have committee reports at every monthly uh, LSB report to the listener. We couldn't do both in the July program. It just was not time. So imperfect as it was, the solution that we came up with was to um, instead to not not have for one month uh, committee reports and at the next committee at the next report we would have double the committee reports in, in double the time so that it would have been made up it was not a perfect solution okay, but this seconds. is not something that we should have had our time taken away from us uh, the, and what's more the peak the request time. to the program director to take away the time did not come from the board. It only came from members of the board who were claiming to speak for the entire board. Okay. Next person. Uh, yes. My concern is about the here, here. My concern is about the policy of the building management or where WVI is located. Uh, it's very difficult to access the building now because I do not mind uh, that you have to show ID and sign, but now that's not enough. You need to have an appointment. And I'm not so sure if that's the same for every other uh, tenant in the building. I think that this isolates uh, the WBI listeners and participants and volunteers from the building. This is good reason for us to look, and I, I pledge that the LSB uh, look at this. I know that the, the, the rent that we must we're paying is, is, is exorbitant because that's prime real estate. And I'm sure that the rent that we are paying is not as high as probably the marketplace is because the rents have gone out uh, lately a lot. I suggest, and I do know that there was a, a committee before looking 
I am aware that we have a lease, but that lease could be swapped with somebody else uh, that wants to be in that prime location. We should have our own building uh, away probably from, from the downtown Manhattan, maybe uptown Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, get our own building. Uh, we will be saving and we'll have more space. It's something that I pledge that we look to because right now uh, it goes against the policies and, and the spirit of WBI to have a place where you, you cannot access. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next please. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I didn't come here expecting to add to the controversy about Steve Brown. I don't regard myself as having been a critic of Steve Brown. But before he left, Steve Brown asked me to sign seven nomination petitions that were already signed by eight or nine people, but with no names of whom the, of whom the signers were endorsing or who I was endorsing. <laughs> I consider that outrageous. <laughs> okay, thank you. John, uh, next, next speaker. Um, I've come to a, a number of meetings in the WBA, I, LSB, and I find myself really shocked at like how awful this I'm meeting always is. Always shocked. And I have yeah, to say, he has the floor. That, he has the floor. I want everybody to allow him to speak shocked. uninterrupted. And I'm then, sorry, John. Start again, and please allow him to speak uninterruptedly for three minutes, as everybody else was allowed to speak. I feel infuriated at how. Robert's rules of order are used to stifle democracy. And R. Paul Martin, you're very smart about knowing what the rules are, but your heart is in a very bad place. And I have to say, uh, yeah. I think uh, come to order, please. Come Mitch to Cohen order. Has said that the station is going down. It is in bad financial shape. But you can look to yourselves for part of that reason. People at this network are not working together. And I find it obnoxious and just unbelievable. You need to, you know, Excuse you me, don't... please do not interfere with his speaking. Do not interact with him. Look at Bob. I have to say, I believe that this faction here should be removed from the board. I don't <laughs> think that it should be <laughs> on the board at all. At all. I would love to see the day when a recall campaign happens to you people. And that you're off the board. And and you you know, it's it's just so get Please come to what? order. Please, go out. please do not interact with him. Please come to order. Everybody here, please come to order right now. Every other person who got up from the public and spoke was allowed to speak uninterrupted. Please, if you, please. Do all the other speakers. I want to say more respectful. Oh, no, he, he, every speaker gets to say exactly what he wishes to say. We do not stifle. Public comment. Oh, that's not true. Right? Okay. What Mr. Brown is after in his campaign of defamation against Bernard White is to get Bernard White out so he can get but Gary White Null is a to come back to the station. Come, come to order. There. Gary Null is an AIDS denialist. Gary Null says HIV does not cause AIDS. It doesn't. That is not a legitimate viewpoint and it should doesn't. not be on the air by a host at WBAI. Yes, these people should be allowed to be on the air as guests, but not as hosts. And the kinds of things that, he's, that he has put out on his website, which he has promoted with the station's resources, include things like anal intercourse is not a risk factor for transmitting AIDS. That is factually false. And I will tell you, there will be demonstrations at WB.